History keeps forgetting to turn up for those cathartic moments when nature and academia come together to produce the perfect fertilizer. And so the honey badgers are here to chase it out of a hole in the ground and grab it before the jackals get it. From the foulest corners of the internet, the stupid flows fault. Join us tonight for another episode of Sh Feminists Say. With special guest, it's only bloody shoe on head! As always, the show will be available for download at honeybedcookie.com. Welcome to Honey Badger Radio. Tonight's topic is Shit Feminists Say, Part 3. <laughs> so we've got a, a wonderful show, a, a really long show actually, uh, lots of interesting topics, and we've got, uh, as always, Crystal Garcia. Crystal. Crystal, wake up. Wake up, Crystal. Ah! I am <laughs> up, it's the buttons, I swear. The, bu <laughs> the um, buttons. Pitch one thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Um. So yeah, the petition is now up to two thousand signatures. So thanks for who's signing, and you can oh, you still find the petition. Is what? Then. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to. Um. It's the petition for UN men to create a UN men in the United Nations. So that will be available. So please share and sign. Thank you. Awesome. We've got Alshin Teeman. Alshin. I uh, yeah yeah. I'm good. I I'm. I'm, yep. I've wife of, the button. I work wife, with, um, wife of the cat lord. Yes, I, I apologize if during the the uh, radio show you hear the persistent meows of a cat with separation anxiety because her cat lord has gone to the garage and she's inconsolable now. Um, that is Mia, by the way, for those of you who are following my channel, which is uh, on YouTube. It's gender addict. And uh, I, uh, my personal, my personal project, and she's immediately getting louder. Um, my personal project is a, is a web comic that deals with men's issues, uh, or at least touches upon them and examines them in a dramatic form. And it's a, uh, it's called Xenospora. Uh, that's X, like ox or xylophone. Xenospora.com. And if you're interested in that, uh, go take a look, because uh, I think I think you know it's a, it's another way to get the word out there and get people maybe get these ideas past people's automatic reflexes and having their guards up and, and their, their frontal lobes into, into a more subconscious area of their brain where it can cogitate and maybe make some changes. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll hand it back to Rachel. There yes, and Hannah Wallen. Hannah. Hello. Um, I guess uh, my, uh, my, my YouTube channel is the last thing that I put something on. I have a, a new video, I guess, last week. Um, it's not anything spectacular, but I would like everybody to take a look at it if you get a chance. And it is Breaking the Glasses on YouTube. Um, if you can't find it on YouTube, I have a link to it on my blog, which is also breakingtheglasses.blogspot.com. Awesome. And later on, we will have our Karen, because apparently she's off, you know, in the sandwich mines preparing dinner. Because otherwise she would starve, and we don't want a starving Karen. So also, it <laughs> my boyfriend was a pain in the butt, and, and so I only have like about 30 seconds when I'm making gravy. Uh, hello, everybody, and I'll see you in a minute. Thanks again, Karen. Oh, yeah, I was a drive-by Karening. Yeah, we will, uh, yeah. Karen, Hannah, and I will actually be uh, in the upcoming, will be at the upcoming KSUM conference in Kennesaw, at Kennesaw State University in Georgia, in the Atlanta area, from what I understand. So yes, that that'll that'll be a fun thing. You can you can meet the Badgers, and but mostly mostly come because there's going to be so many awesome speakers there, and it's there to support male students. So you know, show up if you if you're in the area. And apparently there may also be some feminist protesters, so uh, we would love to invite them to tea and have a nice, long, uh, civil discussion about the issues. 
Well, um, I, I, well, they they say that they're going to have a peaceful protest. I don't know why they needed to raise about. I think it was like a th- one thousand two hundred dollars to to do so. Because I mean, I, I I'm imagining that poster boards and glitter and body paint don't cost that much money. But that's that's just me. I mean, apparently, people have like there's a list floating around of the things that they intend to set up. Apparently, it's going to be like this creative interactive protest. <laughs> Where they have coffee and things. donuts. If they don't well, have coffee and donuts, it's not interactive enough. Well, yeah. I, I will be I, disappointed. I think we need to have like a bunch of pastries, like a, a platter of pastries, and then just have a sign on it and stick it in one of the donuts or something and it says like gender roles and just mm. offer offer them to people. <laughs> I have a recipe for this. <laughs> yeah, gen, gender roles. And Hot um, gender roles. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Like I wonder if there's a Krispy Kreme in the area. Everybody likes Krispy Kreme. <laughs> Yeah, that they're good. It's a southern thing. There's like kind of. one on every corner it's really here. It's yeah, sort of, it's kind of a, a big deal down south and in rural areas. So, but yeah, you know, uh, come out, come out and support Sage because you know he needs it. It's been an uphill battle. He's gotten so much shit. So seriously, yeah, come if you uh-huh. can. And and, uh, and the tickets are free. The tickets are free. And his opponents, his, his uh, ideological uh, um, debate partners, I don't even want to say opponents, I don't want to get into being in any way uh, hateful, I guess opponents might be considered hateful, but uh, ideological debate partners are the type of people that want to shut down uh, health centers, uh, mental health centers for men on campus, and uh, so they, they necessarily do not like the idea of men having a support group for men's issues on Kennesaw State campus university campus yeah so. we've drawn this out really long yeah but uh but yeah it's supposed to be it's gonna be on november the first be there or be square anyway or so, uh, oblong. what oblong what oblong. Oblong. oblong yes, yes oblong oblong, oblong. So, <laughs> yeah we're, we're yeah so anyway anyway back on topic the add kicked in with all of us hannah do you have the news it's on um sh- shall i shall i link you to the page Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Um, woman attacks roommate and sets him on fire over a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. Melissa Dawn Sellers of Clearwater, Florida, was placed in police custody after they couldn't say she was arrested um, after an act of extreme domestic violence. It is alleged that Melissa became upset after finding that her roommate, Carlos Oritz Jr., had thrown out her meal of leftover spaghetti and meatballs. The conflict resulted in her dousing him with nail polish remover and setting him on fire. A friend of the victim, uh, Inez Kosovec, describes his condition in gruesome detail. When he got up, his face was like melting off. It was pink and sore, said Kosovec. Uh, his, his lips were burning. The man was rushed to Tampa General Hospital, where he is in critical condition with burns to his face, chest, and shoulders. This isn't her first run-in with the law. She was previously charged with assault and armed robbery in May of last year. She was released in January, her court file declaring that she posed no danger to the community. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No That's, danger um, to the community. No danger. Not, not at all. Armed That's... robbery isn't that bad. Well, no, I mean, not when you have a vagina. You well, know, she, yeah, it was. It wasn't just arm robbery. It was arm robbery with a knife, and I think yeah, she assaulted a dude who was. Uh, I think he was trying to stop her from leaving. I think it was a convenience store. I could be mistaken on that. There's a lot of different versions of this story floating around. the 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 one that was released from Florida was saying was saying something along the lines of, "Oh, he was upset about her bringing another." man over to the house but other people like from his side of the family say that there was no romantic connection between the two of them and then he's just a nice man taking her in because he saw that she was downtrodden coming out of jail and stuff like that and wanted to you know help herself or whatever so um and uh other sources say that there was the bit about the meatballs and the spaghetti and that that was what tipped her off but there's uh, there's no confirmation that that is exactly what did it. That she didn't just like lose her shit over some kind of conflict for whatever reason, and then just doused him with nail polish remover. But what's re- what's reported Which is, is that extremely flammable. Yes, it's not just like it's it's worse than gasoline. Oh, oh yeah, it's 
it's really vicious. And to Holy just crap. I mean, it's, she because it's acid and er, it, and and burning at the same time. Jeez. Yeah, and I, we hope that he recovers from this. It's that's terrible. Critical condition. That's it's pretty bad. I mean, yeah. I, I'm upset that that this was not taken care of because she was previously apprehended. I think she's actually originally a, a citizen of Canada. And uh, I, I don't know if she has citizenship or what her status is in this country, but it's just sort of a weird situation that they said she poses no threat at all. How long and has she, uh, she been in the United States? I I honestly don't know. I don't know if they if these um, if the articles went into that, but she's been there long enough. I think a couple of years. Yeah. See, we we have a friend. Um, uh, those of us that have. have sort of been around a voice for men for a little while. I mean, I haven't been around for very long, um, but uh, that's the, in Canada that cannot come to the United States, not because he ever did anything wrong, but because someone made an accusation that was found to be baseless, and the accusation is still on his record. Just an accusation. And it, it seems kind of odd that this woman can remain in the United States if she, she wasn't originally from here and, and commit all of that you know the the armed robbery and everything go to jail and get released and not be deported that just is quite uh uneven there yeah i and uh she doesn't really seem like the kind of person that would be able to readily get citizenship because if she's the sort of person that has been engaging in i think that there might have even been incidents before this one where she she had run-ins with the law it, it's it seems to be a pattern from the people that were talking about and discussing it, uh, the people that they were, when they would quote the people who knew them and stuff like that. So it's sort of, she looks horrible. She looks just like she has no sympathy at all for what she did in the mugshot photo. I mean, she probably it, doesn't. I just, how the hell is she still here? I, that I, I honestly, I don't know. But I guess we should, we should go into the next story. Of course we know. It's because she gets infinite get out of jail free cards. Pussy from pass. her dispenser. Pussy pass. That's in a particular yeah. location in her body. Yes. Vagina. Yeah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you That's... for explaining that for us, Rachel. <laughs> it's 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 like you 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 pose no threat because vagina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Next story. And then we're gonna section it off, and we have vagina and West Vagina, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, woman. Woman gets stuck in chimney trying to break into house of man she met online. You uh, can't make that up. <laughs> you can't make this I stuff should, up. I should start reading these before the show, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A woman identified as Genoveva uh, Nunez Figurona became trapped in a chimney after a foil break-in attempt. The woman became wedged eight foot down the pipe while attempting to break into the home of Lawrence Fernandez, a man she'd met at an online dating site. The fire department worked tirelessly for two hours to remove the woman, <laughs> remove the woman from the chimney's tight embrace, disassembling it to, dis to extract her. Uh, apparently, this is not the first time she'd been to the home or the first time she'd ever been on that roof. The homeowner had gone on a few dates with the woman, but broke things off when he found her on his roof one night. She has been arrested on suspicion of attempted burglary. Her family has offered to pay the damages, begging that he not press charges. I wonder how many times they've done that. The thing about it is suspicion. The fact that it Maybe she was trying to break into the house and take things. But, well, I think. I, well, I mean, good call on his part that he broke off with somebody he found yeah. on the, trying to break into his house before, like on his roof. It'd be like, is is that bitch on my roof? Yeah, <laughs> yes, she yeah. is. She's on my roof. I don't yeah. know what's going on here. Oh, uh, you know, I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. Pro like, tip. don't date. If you're going to date people online, do not meet them at your house until you're certain they're not crazy. 
Well, no, he, he probably feel brought so her bad for this guy. He brought her back but, to his house afterwards, you know? Okay, as, as funny as this is, it's horrible. It's creepy. It's not, it's, it's not funny. Yeah, this is a, this She's is funny, but it's not funny. If this is a guy, you it's know, a nervous like, lie. This, this, is, this is a potential murder rape. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. It's it's Just... it's hilarious that she got stuck, <laughs> but it's not funny that she broke no, into the no. house. I I think the funny thing is that you know the guy didn't call the cops the first time that he found a bitch up on his roof. I, yeah, I can't that's... even. I, I I don't even know. He's How... like he's like, what are you doing who, on my who roof? Who has that thought? Oh, I know. I think I'll go through the chimney. Okay, it's already bad. Nobody should be jumping into anybody's house. But why the chimney? I, I find this kind of disturbing. Well, apparently she didn't think she was bigger than Santa. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's got that appeal. Well, uh, first of all, we're dealing with a creeper, right? So maybe it has some sort of appeal. Yeah, yeah. Just peek, suit cover, uh, you know, covered in soot. And you can just peek, un, you know, from the behind the bricks into his living room. And maybe he won't notice there's a bat in <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't, that shit crazy. This is the yeah. scariest thing I can think of. If I was, if I was a man, this is like the scariest shit I can think of. Because there's like some bitch and just like peering in through the glass in the chimney, like but from behind, like that little frame thing that they put up to try and guard to make sure that you know that there's no, yeah. you know, you know that the flames don't, you know, go over. Anyway, and and she's just peering in there, like there he is. <laughs> I will wait here until dark, <laughs> and he will be mine. <laughs> What? That's, that's the scariest thing ever. Kiki Spaghetti says, they climbing down your chimney in your windows. <laughs> I guess it would still be funny if it was a man. I mean, it would be funny to me. Uh, yeah. but... if, uh, this, the, her experience was funny. His experience is not, but her experience is funny. And it's something that happens. You, yeah. you, you see it in the news every so often. Some idiot tries to break into somebody's house by climbing down the chimney, not realizing that the inside of the chimney is much smaller than the outside and not necessarily straight up and down. Bitch, you ain't Santa Claus. <laughs> you getting shit for Christmas. <laughs> She ain't, she ain't, uh, she's been naughty this year. <laughs> uh, this gives uh, a whole new turn yeah. to uh, hurry down the chimney tonight. Oh, uh, we probably <laughs> should inform people that we that you know she will be on she she on head yeah will be yeah on. yeah but she's at work right now she will be here later. But yeah, yes. for, for right now she is yeah. We we promise. We promise. She's we promise. not we stuck promise. in the chimney. She's not. No. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> We do not well, even have a chimney. I, I don't know. I think some people... Wait, she can come that. on now. Well, we we'll don't on. know that she's not stuck in a chimney somewhere. We don't have any evidence for that. For all we know, she's actually a ninja with, with magical powers and shit. And right now, she's like off fighting, I don't know, Hydra or something. Hydra? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Hydra. Sorry, guys. Guys, oh, sorry. Shit. I was, I was um, stuck in a chimney. I'm, I'm back. Uh, what were you guys talking about? <laughs> What? <laughs> Who's Jimmy? Wait, uh, what's uh? What's going on? Well, right, right now, what we're doing is we're, we're going through the news, and usually, what we do is uh, we, the news is read, and then we discuss the topic. So, um, okay. so, uh, and recently, we discussed uh, there's there's a woman who um, who she who met a man online, and uh, apparently, the the man. You know, and you know, he he brought her over to his house at w at least one time when he was on one of these dates. She remembered where it was, and she decided, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna go pay him a visit by go by going down his chimney." Uh, <laughs> that is really creepy. That's like something yes. from a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> Only if she does it in a very boneless, liquid way. Ew. She sort of she just like down the just like and... transforms into like amphibious sponge creature and like yeah, yeah. slithers down the chimney. Ugh. <laughs> I love you already. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh. So okay. okay. So, so here's here's the okay. Next story. Next story. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Let's see. Back to the stories. Uh. Woman first charged under Virginia's new anti-revenge porn law. This is just the night of women behaving badly, almost. Um, the law, which went into effect July 1st, 
makes it a class one misdemeanor to with intent to coerce, harass, or intimidate, maliciously distribute a sexually explicit image of another person without their permission. Okay, 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 just a second, Hannah. Yeah. Shu, um, mm -hmm. we can hear you moving around furniture. Oh, sorry. I'm closing the store right now. I'm still at yeah. work. Just, just mute the, uh, mute the, uh, okay, that's a great cover story there. Okay, mute I'll the, just, um, <laughs> I'll just listen to you guys. Try to get out of the chimney. Done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, I'll mute myself until I'm done. All right. Okay. Okay, okay bye. Okay. Um... Uh, an Augusta County, Virginia woman, 28-year-old Rachel Lynn Craig, has been charged after she allegedly posted the naked photo of her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend on Craigslist. That was Facebook. That was my fault, too. I wrote this. Uh, Police Sergeant Brian Edwards reports that the, the target alleges the images were taken from her boyfriend's phone after she created it and texted it to him. Ms. Craig stated that she posted the image out of anger at the target, who she considered a romantic rival. In 2014, uh, bills were introduced or are pending in at least 28 states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. Um, legislation has been enacted in Arizona, Colorado, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Idaho, uh, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. Anti-revenge porn legislation has been introduced in Japan and Brazil. Israel classified re revenge porn as a sex crime in January of 2014. Uh, and the Australian state of Victoria tacked it into existing sexting laws. Laws are in place addressing intimate images and privacy in France and Germany. And the Philippines has had a law in place uh, since 2009 criminalizing photo and video voyeurism. So uh, just really wow. quick, you'll notice that I didn't use the word victim in this story. Um, now, I, I do consider this theft. I mean, you, you break into somebody's computer, you break into somebody's phone, you break into somebody's stuff and take something out of it that they didn't say you could have. It's theft. And yeah, the person's a victim of theft. Um, but as far as take those pictures, um, you, you don't want to do that unless you're willing to own it. You don't do it if you're just going to be horribly upset if they're ever seen. If it's something that you're you're going to find shameful later on, then then it's not for you. You do it if you can own it. You do it if it's not a problem for you and and you can step up and say, "Yep, that's my ass. Look at it." You know, and and that's it. Um so I I, I do agree with arresting the thief who stole the picture and, and passed it on to other people because she stole something from somebody and, and gave it to somebody it didn't belong to. But as far as treating this like a sexual attack, it's really not. And, and it's it, it kind of bugs me to see stuff like this going on, especially um, especially considering that similar revenge takes place against ex-boyfriends and nobody seems to care and it's not just i mean there's revenge porn against ex-boyfriends and everything but there's a whole nother set of websites out there to get revenge on your ex-boyfriend where girls and adult women post slanderous stories about their exes um rating them negatively and saying nasty things about them and sometimes going so far as to accuse them of criminal activity. And some of these sites will actually blackmail the guys if they, they show up and say, hey, this profile is is false and, and malicious and I want it taken down, they make them pay to take it down. And there isn't really anybody addressing that. So it, it seems to me that, that uh, it's kind of hypocritical for you know, them to get all upset about this and, and leave that alone and not really get yeah. the least bit in a tiz over it. And uh, uh, from chat, it, it's not just Lulu. There are, there's a multitude of them. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of sites like that. But here, here's the thing that I, that I, that really baffles me. Why would somebody think that Facebook or any of these really easy to hack dumping grounds for your nudes would be safe 
at all. Not even your phone. I really, well, I mean, and here's, here's something, just a word to the wise. There are very easy scripts out there that somebody can use to hack your Facebook, okay, and then take all your nudes. It's not difficult to hack a Facebook account at all. You only need a script. I've never done this myself, but I know that these things exist. Do For the love of God, I mean, this is coming from an atheist. For the love of God, do not, do not place your nudes in a secret folder on your Facebook ever or, or on your Facebook at all or on well, any of these like, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, photo bucket or any, of, don't do it. It's not well, a, unless you don't care if they get idea. out public. Don't, don't put it on your phone. Don't, don't send it to people. Don't do it. Unless you are one of those professional nude models that really don't care and that's your whole job, that's probably, you know, or, or you're in porn and you don't care, I would imagine don't do it. Just don't. Yeah, or, or if you just don't care, you know, and it, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of funny. You, you think about it, um, every, every time you hear about slut shaming, you know, you, you hear about it and you get, you get told that, you know, the general public is the one doing it and everything. But it's feminists who get all up in arms about stuff like this. It's feminists who are like, oh, this is a violation. This is nudity. You know, how horrible. And, and it's – She should not got to be terribly – but she should right? be terribly embarrassed now. It's, it's just skin. Everybody has it. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. It's like, oh, teach, teach them not to hack. Well, we know these people shouldn't do these things. But if you know that people have been doing this forever and they do it to people regardless of their gender – they just keep doing it. Um, you're you're an idiot to not protect yourself. I mean, you, you don't just sit there and say, "Tell people not to not to put spyware and all this other crap on the internet." I'm not going to install an antivirus software. Don't it's, you would you would say, "Oh, that's ridiculous." Of course, we would love there to not be a need for things like antivirus software, anti spyware, anti malware, but we know those horrible people are out there and to not protect yourself is just plain stupid but yeah these people the people that do this are equally bad we know that they're bad yeah. don't don't give them the ability to victimize you in this way and you know don't think your phone's safe either i mean recent news stories have proved proved that you know it's it's that's just the way it is and as far as you know it's a shitty thing to do to somebody yeah but and there are a lot of shitty things to do to somebody, and the more part of the reason that people do this kind of shit is because you get outraged over it. You know, if if oh, it okay. did not set off a reaction in yeah, the target, it wouldn't get done. I'm back, bitches. Allison, you got anything to say about it? Uh, did uh, someone quote Shiro Niko Sama? Oh, oh no, no. It says I wait. No, I don't. I'll do it. I'll do it. Amen. So this is from Shiro Niko Sama. You know, don't don't Neko. put Neko Neko whatever. Um, don't put uh, uh, face nudes up on your Facebook page. Uh, and this is uh, Shiro Neko Sama's comment. Amen. This is why my Facebook is full of gay bear porn. <laughs> so is mine, Niko Neko. Neko so, is how you is how you say it. It's it's yes. Japanese. Damn and Bara, right? Bara. Gosh, yeah. that gives a whole new meaning to Neko wafers. I'll never eat them again. <laughs> Kid, well, it means kitty. I, I know. Guess. So they're like cat wafers. I see. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. no! Yay! Don't eat the kitty. <laughs> oh well, well, that that gives a whole other meaning to. Eating. <laughs> I was gonna say that depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, I guess you're right. Don't listen to Allison. Always eat the kitty. Always. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Allison always eats the pussy. Well, how did we get... Okay, all right. I don't know how this happens. How did it happen? It, it happens... Well, just let it happen. happen. Anyway, just, Karen, just, is, Karen is here again. Yes, have, you fed, have you fed your creatures, Karen? I did. I fed most of them. I fed most of them. The other ones, they, they don't get fed because then they, they, they just get more annoying. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay, no, next story. Next story. It gives the energy to bother me, and and I don't like that. So, 
Um, yeah. So this... have, so, wait, wait, is there like a dungeon in the basement of your house or something? Absolutely. Also, I just invested in 72 kilos of silica gel for the bad smells emanating from my attic. I don't have the kind of money it would take to bribe the uh, construction guys to like when they're actually filling the road back in outside my place to, to like <laughs> hide things and stuff. So they, <laughs> um, just steal your attic. Yeah, no. And, and, you know, it, you desiccate a body enough. It just doesn't smell anymore. It's, it's actually quite <laughs> all the weight goes out of it. You don't even have to buttress the ceiling beams. It's awesome. How many do you have up there? I have a whole bunch. Oh my goodness! You know, it's yeah. That that's me. I'm. I'm a People are gonna take this out of context. Oh, <laughs> they take everything you do and, and say out of context. And now, oh, yeah. oh my god! And and, of course, really... the man boobs crowd will take it totally seriously. Oh, and, uh, oh my god! Uh, if before we go to the next story, if anybody's listening, How please. Have, you tweet. guys know too much now. I I'm guess it's you. desiccating in your attic. Sorry, right. um, well, we Americans will just talk question. more to people and you can't come well, get us. Any of us are for shoe. Uh, please tweet it at Honey Badger Bite. That's at Honey Badger Bite on Twitter. And, uh, and, and we will endeavor to answer your question. Do it now. <laughs> or face my squirrely wrath. Or possibly oh, end up uh, a corpse in desiccating in, in Karen's attic. Not that I have That's any. That's desiccated, those... not desecrated. Not, not that there are any of those up there at the moment. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> just, just news. Trying. Okay, this is getting really awkward. So yeah, let's... yeah. News. Well, just, just continue, continue on. We're gonna scare away our shoe. <laughs> Adobe takes stand against bullying. Bullies blame GamerGate. Attack Adobe. On October twentieth, uh, Twitter user. Leo Pirate tweeted Adobe or at Adobe, sending screenshots of Gawker uh, writer Sam Biddle's hate speech and calling for Adobe to pull its ads. Adobe responded with a statement disassociating th themselves with Gawker and denouncing bullying. Quote, we are not an advertiser with Gawker. We asked Gawker to remove our logo. Adobe stands against bullying. End quote. Along with the statement was a link to the Bully Project, an anti-bullying social action campaign with increasing participation and a goal of using education and community involvement to combat bullying. The tweet garnered an immediate and widespread response. Many posted messages thanking Adobe for their stand against bullying. Gawker's outraged followers presumed the message to be support for Gamergate, despite there being no mention of the movement. They flooded Adobe with messages ranging from baseless and hysterical to harassing and threatening, some users even bragging about their theft of some of Adobe's software in response to the presumed slight. Established media sources have tried to spin the story as they have tried to spin Gamergate in the past, writing about an entirely different movement than the one actually taking place, and Gawker published an article calling Gamergaters fascists and their own former advertisers craven cowards and blaming everyone but themselves for the consequences of Biddle's public attack. Uh, writer Max Reed, author of the di diatribe, even used the word integrity like he has some kind of clue what that means. Reed, coincidentally, uh, wrote the article, which was the starting point for a massive hysteria campaign spanning Gawker's main blog, its uh, feminist Jezebel blog, and Reddit.com's subreddit, Shit Reddit Says. That campaign ultimately resulted in a public media attack on Violent Acres, a well-known Redditor for being asked to help keep illegal images out of subreddits being protested by social justice warriors. Gawker writer Ad Adrian Chen publicly doxed Violent Acres, the sole supporter of his family, leading to a harassment campaign which cost him his job. So let's get this straight. Attacking an hourly wage worker supporting a disabled spouse and kid was just fine and dandy, but consumer outrage over dishonest media practices is fascism. Welcome to 1984, folks, and here we thought we'd entered the 21st century. Wow. I, I didn't know... I didn't know the part about uh, Violent Acres. I didn't know he'd been doxxed. Wow. Oh, yeah, that was, it's been yeah more if than you, a year. A couple yeah, of years, if, actually. 
Yeah, if you ask any of these people, they, they act like people of Gamergate who are involved, but none of the men get doxxed or harassed or hacked or anything or get sent violent death threats at all. They just, like, no, no, that, 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 that never happens. No, well, you, nope, you, you, nope. you have to You have to look at it like, <laughs> for every, like, for every woman who ends up in Adria Richards, how many Larry Summers are there? How many Justin Vakulas are there? How many Violent Acres are there? How many men end up being fired or boycotted? How many William Fe- Frezes are there, right? How many men get fired because some angry women said, this guy is a rape apologist misogynist, right? Compared to the one. We, we know of one woman. There is one woman who has lost her job, right? And oh my God, the 4chan campaign that was required, right? No. To actually hold this woman accountable and, and hold her accountable for violating somebody's privacy, right? Publishing his picture without his permission over the internet, making an accusation over the internet, right? And, and he ended up fired, right? One of those two men that she was, she was, protesting against uh, being doing her Joan of Arc routine against right one of those two men was fired from his job she got fired from her job how many other women lose their jobs because they offend somebody on the internet and for clarification that was dongle gate where we were discussing we're talking about Adria Richards that was a couple couple years ago was it last year or the year before that uh one or two one and a half something yeah 2012 I think that one happened in 2012 yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. It feels like either, yesterday. You know, someone like Larry Summers has to step down for, as the president of Harvard because he posits that, you know, maybe there's fewer female than male sci- physics and, and mathematics professors because there's more male geniuses than female geniuses and more male morons than female morons, right? And, oh, what was that interpreted as? He said that women that men are better than women at math and science. <laughs> they have like mind filters in their nope. minds. Yeah. Like everything that. everything that goes in one ear, it comes out the other as something completely different. Like it's, it's like you know, like I could I could, I could look at what he said and I could say, he's saying men are dumber than women. No. Yeah. Right? Well, since they didn't even hear that, they all heard my ass looks fat. He said my ass looks fat. <laughs> Like I like it, it's, it's 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 obscene, and you know, like so you look at it and you look who is afraid to which which ideology or which philosophy or which group which advocacy group is afraid to blog under their real name, which one, right? Oh yeah, it's not feminists. It ain't Jessica Valenti. It ain't Amanda Marcotte. It ain't you know freaking uh, uh, Naomi Wolf who was married to a Clinton speechwriter, right? Like, it, it ain't any of these women who have, you know, so much to fear for having unpopular opinions on the internet. No, the people who are actually genuinely afraid of coming out under their real names are the men who are advocating for men's issues and the men who are criticizing feminism. Even the women here, right? June, you yeah. even use yeah. your real first name. I don't know if you want your real last name, out there, but you know, I'm sure you uh, would be. You know, it's really easy even, to find, but um, yeah, yeah. Even with that, that, that little bit of information that your name is June, right? You are locatable, right? Hannah, oh, you yeah, get the first. The, the real name. I'm using my real second, name. Allison is using her real name. Like so many of these women who are talking about this stuff and opposing feminism and social justice warriors and and all of the freaking psychosis that goes along with it. We are not afraid, right? Of well, I'm afraid. Right? Okay, you're afraid of what? I don't know. <laughs> ah, stepping out of Lego, that's what I'm afraid of. You know, uh, like, oh, God. That, really, that really hurts. I really it's, it's like the geese around here. Oh, you, know what's, you know what's really worse than stepping on Lego? And it just seems counterintuitive. Stepping on Lego is much less painful than stepping on a marble. Oh, yeah. oh, well, I guess that would depend on would, the location of the foot, but... You would, you would, you would, it's not the marble itself that's that bad, it's the fall that we... 
<laughs> Chu, you wanted to say something. You know, you really have to elbow your way in yeah, with this you, crowd. So. Especially, yeah. Chu, go I'm... ahead. Oh, um, no, it's just kind of, it's embarrassing how, um, like, it's you can critique any of these women, uh, like the ones you listed, um, Jessica Valanti, Anita Sarkeesian. You can just say, like, hey, what you said was wrong, and then people will come out of the blue, like, how dare you criticize a woman and just use woman as a buzzword to, like, just, just, it's extremely patronizing. It's crazy. Um, they kind of, like, hide behind it. What's interesting is that they can criticize women like us all they want, Uh, you know? I know. (laughs) We don't give a fuck. All, all the kind of stuff that they, but we, we've lost that female privilege apparently because I we have don't internal know. misogyny. Internal yeah. misogynies. Yeah, we have the misogynies. misogynies. <laughs> uh, but uh, because we won't accept uh, the social role as victim. Like, we don't believe in the patriarchy. It's crazy. Like uh, when you don't identify as a victim, it's like they try to bring you down to that level. Like, yeah, but you are. Like this, this, this. You're just brainwash you are a victim like what do you they like bully you into like submission it's like <laughs> they almost have to victimize hey, you to make you a victim God, are, they... are, you, are you are you familiar with um with our ongoing joke which is uh well i don't know if we don't know if you listen to us but uh it's uh the patriarchy or the patriarchy it's you know cake culture so it's oh no <laughs> the patriarchy oh my gosh it's 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 controlling me i can't stop eating all this cake <laughs> Delicious, delicious frosting. It's oppressing my hips. <laughs> I, you know, you know, I love, I love this time of year too because it's pumpkin season and like you can sneak vegetables into into your patriarchy, your pastryarchy, and your cake culture. Yeah. You can yeah. sneak the veggies in, and and they they taste like cake. It's the most Magic. amazing. It's like it's like so cake delicious. So yeah. so cake delicious. Do we okay, have? We have yeah, we have. We have. We have some more. Yes, we we do. I I, I will try to to get. We need to get through these <laughs> before we get to the to the silly place. We're we're, we're holding we're holding it off, but it's gonna get there. It's no. anyway. Yeah, it's it's inevitable. Our, like yeah, it's, the, it's inevitable. Event um, horizon of a black hole. All right, all right. Uh, the uh, Kenyan romance tourism in Mombasa. Kenya, where many locals are poverty sorry poverty stricken, a booming industry is emerging. The industry is romance tourism. Aging European women go to exotic locales to engage in paid liaisons between them and young, attractive local men. They shower the men with expensive gifts, a place to stay, and most importantly, cold, hard cash. Some women are upfront about the sex, while others want to play up the fantasy, pretending that these men are actually interested in them romantically. The men play along, often in hopes of finding citizenship in Europe, or even just a better life for themselves. But here's where the insanity comes in. Many of the women report feeling heartbroken and victimized after finding that their paid escorts are interested in anything more than money. Even crazier is the double standard on full display. When men seek out these kinds of relationships, it's seen as sleazy and degrading to women. When men, sorry, when women hire prostitutes, they are seen as victims, and at times even empowered for doing so. The men of Mombasa are not alone. Romance tourism is well established in many exotic destinations with impoverished locals, and most notably in the Caribbean. Remember, folks, when men hire prostitutes, they are using them. But when men are the prostitutes, well, they are still somehow using women. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's well, ridiculous. Because... Well, it's, it's easy to understand. It's not ridiculous. It has a perfect logic to it. Feminism can take any situation... When a woman is in and make her into the victim of that situation. In fact, feminism can take a situation that has no women in it and make women the victim of it. It's yes. oppression well, I, fetish. I've seen feminists do this yeah. with... Um, oh, so go ahead, Jean. Go ahead, Jean. Yeah. Go ahead, Jean. Oh, no, I, I said it. It's just, it's just like this oppression fetish they have. It's I, love, I love that phrase you use, oppression fetish. I love it's, it. It's true. It's disgusting. They push it into like literally any conversation. Um... Yeah. It's embarrassing. Go on. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like, oh my gosh, how dare you how dare you break up with me after I paid you for sex for months and we were in a relationship that was entirely based on money. How dare you leave me uh, right. after will... taking the money? <laughs> right. Well feminists can absolutely when 
I was online having a, some debate somewhere uh, discussing male victims of domestic violence. Um, the videos that are going around, the one especially, I think it was made by the Mankind Project, where they did uh, in, you know, in the streets, where they did women getting abused and everybody jumps to it, and a man getting abused and someone, you know, people laughing. They had the nerve to say, the reason people are laughing is because they think women are so pathetic that they can't actually harm someone. So that's why this, that's why people think it's funny. And, and I'm like, wait a, wait a fucking minute. Did you just make male domestic violence about the patriarchy? Like, did you just, how are you even doing this shit? Like, I, I don't even know how they, even, well, see, that's because they see women as weak and that's why this is funny to people. And I'm like, how the fuck did you just miss that this has nothing to do with you? Okay. I've, with anything. I've, seen them, I've seen them define male on male prison rape as misogyny. Right? Oh my it's really God. misogyny because <laughs> the victim is put in the position of a woman, and so he is a proxy woman, therefore he is a female victim. He is the equivalent what? of a victim. Oh, I it's it's like it's like fucking insane. It's ridiculous, you know, like you know, and, and the whole you know, how they have to form these elaborate arguments, and yes. Of course, women are taken a, much, a lot less seriously than men when they're, like, freaking beaten on somebody. Of course they are, right? And and a lot of that has to do with indulging these sort of ideas of, you know, women just are not capable of doing harm to people. However, right, when you actually are witnessing a woman doing harm to somebody and you find it funny, like on right, the talk, right. when they're laughing about some cunt who... Who, whose husband filed for divorce so she chopped his dick off and put it down the fucking garbage disposal, right? And the whole entire fucking audience of women found that just wildly fucking hilarious, right? This is like aggravated mayhem and torture, okay? And, and, and ima- a complete, like, castration, okay? And so she's done serious fucking harm. Like, it's clearly, she is, she is capable of that. And they're still laughing, right? They are not a they are not incapable of seeing her as someone capable of doing harm. They're not laughing because she's weak. They're laughing because the guy got his fucking dick chopped off. Yeah, That's it's disgusting. Right? If there were to be a woman getting her vagina sewed up and, and people laughing like, you know, what you know what I mean? If if we were to say, Oh, okay, so then let's why don't we just sew some woman's vagina up and all laugh at that? That sounds funny, doesn't it? How guys, about, guys, calm down a bit. A woman rapes Don't talk over each other. With a knife, okay? And see if people laugh about it because, oh, it was perpetrated by a woman, and oh, we see women as weak, and that's why we find it funny. Like, fuck right. you. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Karen Smash? Karen yeah, Smash. yeah, Karen Smash. <laughs> calm down, calm down, Karen. Calm down. Okay, no, no, calm down. I love it. Smash <laughs> <some> more. <laughs> No, oh, but, but, smash the matriarchy. Like, culture. But all of this, like they can see women, women as victims in every situation. They can see it, they have this magical switch in their brain. In any situation that a woman is in, she can be seen as a victim, and they seek out new forms of of how to see women as victims. And yeah. what really gets me is they call that empowerment. Ugh. Well, okay, getting back yeah. onto the topic, though, um, I actually, I think I watched at least a, a video or at least a mini documentary on some of this sex tourism, and it's, it really is, uh, it, depending on the, on the location, it is dominated by women, and they're usually older um, women who have, you know, maybe they've just spent so much of their, their time working on a career, they never met the one so then every now and then, uh, like once or a couple times a year, they will go to a specific de- destination as an escape, and then they'll pay maybe a specific guy or, you know, or just whoever strikes their fancy, and they'll, you know, they'll spend some time there, a couple weeks, uh, trying to live out their fantasy romance situation where they pretend that they're, that he's interested in her for her looks and her personality, um... And not the lots of cash he's shoving into his hand and well, down his is, pants. How is that different? How is that different from a man who goes to a strip club and pays for a lap dance? 
or a man who goes to a prostitute. Well, it's not right? bad. It's just, you know, it's just that let's recognize it for what it is. What they, the thing about it is, is they're calling it romance tourism right. instead of sex tourism. Oh, it's, it's, oh, okay. Okay. So the man who goes and, and engages a prostitute, an escort, right? And wants the girlfriend experience, right? Mm -hmm. Which means he wants to spend an hour with her getting to know her and, and understanding her and relating to her as a human being before they get down to the actual, you know, mm -hmm. And he's yeah, willing to pay yeah. extra for that. And a lot of guys are. A lot of guys really have a hard time. Um, and just I know this from talking to guys who have used prostitutes. They have a really hard time with the whole, you got 20 minutes, let's let's get on with it. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, problem they, comes in. They want, they want to see these women as human. They do. Yeah. Right? Well, um, the and is, is this is um, these people are really poor in these specific destinations, and these women are really, in a way, they are exploiting them because they don't have many employment opportunities in general, and some of them are are married and have children and things like that, and this is their only way of feeding their families. <laughs> Here's the thing, and those there's a there's a different understanding in those type of countries, like the people who are married and being prostitutes is not seen the same way as it is here because and, and it I, is it is a, a form of of um feeding the family so they don't look down on it like it's looked down on here and and well, i would i would hesitate not to saying call it's it bad it's just you know i really I, you know, like, I would really hesitate to call it exploitation uh in that in that direction whether the prostitute is a man or a woman um right, just right. because if you're doing it by your own choice even if it's if even if it's the 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 best of all your shitty choices as far as earning money, right? It's still a choice. It's, it's still a choice and, and yeah. it's still, uh, you're still getting benefit out of it. And, and it's still, you know, it, like th this is what drives me crazy about um, feminists who are against prostitution of, of women is, you know, like, who are you to say what a woman is allowed to do with her own body? Who are you to decide that you're so morally superior that you get to dictate what she's not allowed to do with her body and what she's not allowed to get out of it. I mean, she, oh yeah, she can op open her legs for a $15,000 engagement ring and, and a commitment to, you know, of lifetime support, but she can't do it for like 500 bucks. Like what the fuck? Like, yeah, I just don't like that they, uh, they try to make it out to be like, there's a difference between a guy going off to a, uh, an exotic locale to date attractive women and you know, pay them a couple bucks for some sex. Well, I, uh, I, and, and, you know, and you know, hiring some prostitutes. They don't see any. Di they they try to romanticize the idea of, of an they older do. Of woman. Course, they don't, they don't want to own the fact that they they're paying for a whore. They're paying for a whore, and they don't want to call it that. They don't want to own that. They don't want to own that they are very sexual and they want to have sex and they'll pay for it uh, because, oh, that's, that's, oh, we can't talk about sex. It's romance. Yeah, okay. His penis is in your vagina. You're having sex. You're paying him. You just hired a whore. Congratulations. Yeah, you know, they're not romanticizing these men either. They're romanticizing the motivations and intentions of the women. That's what yeah. they're doing, right? Um, they are holding her as some kind of pristine, pure kind of entity that has no interest in anything so nitty gritty and like degraded as just like sex for money. No, she wants to be romance and she wants, and for all I know, yeah, she wants that just like a lot of guys who have the money will pay extra for the girlfriend experience, right? I mean, like, but when push comes to shove, she's still paying somebody for their company and she's still paying somebody for their sexual services. And that is prostitution. And I am not going to, I'm not prepared to say that if everybody's entering into the contract voluntarily, right. Um, that, that it's exploitation in either direction. And I, th I find it just like, because we are unwilling to see women in that way, right. We automatically have to turn it all on its head and say, these men are exploiting her right? They're exploiting her desire for romance and her desire for intimacy and all of this. Like, what the fuck is intimacy? It's just like, you know, romantic in intimacy is just sex. Right, right. It's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's, it's all of the emotions and the vulnerabilities that come out when two people are naked together. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing is that it, it, it threatens their femininity to not, to feel like they can't get a well, guy to pay for one. Yeah. Uh, well, we have one uh, more topic. <laughs>
Yeah, um, but uh, did, I wanted to ask Just June, do you have anything to add? She's silent. Please. Quiet. She's up. It must something. be the mute button, I swear. Oh, wait, what would you say? Sorry. Oh, I was wondering if you had anything to add to the topic at all. Um, no, pretty much you all said it exactly how I felt about it. Um, Maybe we should bring you in earlier so you can say what we would say. I have something to say about the next one, though. Uh, yeah, because, yeah. Let's, get, let's get... give June the opportunity to respond first, if, if you're okay with that, June. Okay. All let's, right. Let's, let's um, go. I'm actually walking to my car right now, so. Oh, oh, well, careful. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Um... I got my keys in my hand, you know, walking out to my car at night. <laughs> Gotta be protected. <laughs> Big Red could be in any bush at any time. Uh, hi, Constant like, fear. Your windows. Yeah. Climbing oh, you in your chimneys. I was walking out the back door of a restaurant the other night, and I'm like, I'm like singing along to I forget like Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond, which is playing on the radio, right? I'm like, Sweet Caroline, bum, bum, bum. and I walk out, right? I got an apron full of money, and there's a dude picking cigarette butts out of the butt bucket outside the back door. And the first thing in my head was not, I'm in danger, but oh my god, he heard me singing, holy fucking. <laughs> 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 The cigarette. I know, we got to hear you sing. You and know, it's Karen. You I'm suck, Karen. You I'm suck. I'm just stand here and like pretend that I don't notice him until he comes away. Okay. Uh, Karen's, Karen's a music on. Nazi. In humiliation, <laughs> and we'll move on to. Did we move okay. on to the next topic? Or okay, just... wait. I, I gotta wait. I gotta. I gotta read the next topic. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, yes. It's um. All right. A Nebraska middle school defense. Uh oh, somebody's. Uh, June, you gotta mute there because you got. Yeah, all right, bye. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> all right. Uh, Nebraska middle school defends the purple penguin gender inclusivity uh, training guide. A middle school teacher who passed out gender inclusiveness training guidelines to her colleagues uh, stated that it was meant, sorry, states that it was meant to start a conversation and not a war. The conver the controversy arose from the handout suggesting that students be referred to with gender neutral terminology, reaching levels of ridiculousness that went viral. Suggestions for gender, gender neutral terms were, were things like, uh, campers, readers, scholars, or even purple penguins. And to avoid saying boys and girls. The teacher's well-meaning attempt at inclusivity read as insanity comparable to that of Sweden's gender-neutral classrooms with non-gendered pronouns. The predictable backlash came from parents feeling that the school had no place in redefining gender or in going this far to appear inclusive. They felt that instead of being informed, their children were being, were being indoctrinated. Though some of the backlash was religious in nature, many of those concerned parents felt that such decisions... Sorry, sort... <laughs> Such discussions were more appropriate for high school-aged students than with young children. The handout asks teachers to consider whether a classroom configuration will create, quote, a gendered space, asking teachers to provide accommodations for special pronouns and to avoid referring to any behaviors as normal. Gee, I can't imagine why the parents would be upset at all. <laughs> and I have, well I have the handout here. No, fellow I love badgers. What do you think, purple badgers? I I love how they're like, we wanted to start a conversation, not a war. Like, okay, welcome to 2014. That's this is what happens now. <laughs> it's gonna be a war. Um, that's ridiculous. Purple penguins. I, yeah, Sweden, no, I, yes. I, I, let's not oh refer God. to them as boys and girls. Let's refer to them as like subhuman. <laughs> right. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This stuff doesn't happen. That's, I got told that on Reddit that that nobody with an agenda ever forces the you know the either the opposite gender or genderless anything on on kids who are gender conforming or or not uh, gender confused. It just doesn't happen. So obviously this story just not real. Oh gosh, and it's okay, like Mr. Reed, it's really not real. Well, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna quote from this because I've got the handout uh, on the. Um, the, the page, so I'm going to read from the PDF file. Uh, see here, it says, um, 
Avoid asking kids to line up as boys or girls, separating them by gender. Instead, use things like odd and even birth date, or would you choose skateboards, bikes, milk, or juice, or and dogs, or cats, summer, or winter and, winter and talking, or listening. Invite students to come up with choices themselves. Consider using tools like uh, the appointment schedule to form pairs or groups. Always ask yourself, will this configuration create a gendered space? Don't use phrases such as boys and girls, you guys, ladies and gentlemen, and similarly gendered expressions to get kids' attention. Instead, say things like calling all readers or hey campers or could all of the athletes come here? Create classroom names and ask, and then ask all of the Purple penguins to meet at the rug. Oh my oh god. god. Hey, is this real? Oh, is this yes, a real thing? Yes, I, this is, I, yes, I love this. I have to do this. Perfect neutral. Is this America? Yes. Is this, yes. This is America. Yes. Okay. This is not I, Sweden. This is no, America. No. Oh this my god. In Nebraska. I, I, I have the perfect gender neutral solution that will end this <laughs> argument forever. Okay? We just get all the teachers to say, all right, you fucking bratty little bastards, <laughs> line up at the door. And it's inclusive, right? It's gender neutral. Bastards can be male or female, yeah. right? Illegitimacy is gender neutral. And, and just like, and brats also gender neutral. And, and there you go. It's all good. I, I really I, I, need some more of this. Because it's just, um... <laughs> Have visual images reinforcing gender inclusion. Pictures of people who don't fit gender norms. Signs that strike out sayings like all boys or all girls or all genders welcome door hangers. When you find it necessary to reference gender, say boy, girl, uh, both or neither. When, when asked neither. why, use this as a, as a teachable <laughs> moment. <laughs> Emphasize to students that your classroom recognizes and oh. celebrates the gender diversity oh of all students. Let me point this out for a moment. This wrong. isn't, um, this is a, now. when we talk about, um, uh, we don't, I think this was just in general to, to colleagues. I don't this, think this is necessarily just a specific school. So what we're talking about here is we're not talking about high school age kids. That's absolutely, that's, that's not the kinds of teachers that they were alerting. So I think they said a middle school but I think they're alluding to the understanding that they were briefing people of, you know, primary schools and elementary schools. So because you don't sit there and when you when you're calling people to the rug, we're talking about kindergarten. OK, <laughs> we're not talking about because when was the last time you were in high school and someone called you to sit on a rug? <laughs> it's like, come here, sit to well... the rug. <laughs> it's. Wow. Um, and that wasn't making any comments. That was like, you know, people like to use bright colors when they're in kindergarten, but <laughs> you know, with, with the, with the little letters and stuff on, but, um, cause that's, that's what I think of when I, I think of like just multicolored stuff everywhere. It's cause it's really, but anyway, um, the thing about it is, is they, they actually went so far as to say, okay, here, here's number 10. That's just the most important one. I think help recognize all or nothing language by helping them understand the difference between patterns and rules. Teach them phrases like, that may be true for some people, but all, but not all people, or frequently, but not always, or more common and less common. Avoid using normal to define any behaviors. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I okay, the first part of that I can understand because you don't want to generalize, but the... Yeah. The second part when you're saying, avoid saying normal, well, you know, that's how we sit there and define when there's an issue. If we don't know when there is an issue with someone or if they're having problem behavior, would you sit there and say, um, listen, your kid is acting out. This isn't normal. Uh, we think they might be, I don't know, a future serial killer. <laughs> But you can't Jenny say... just stabbed Sarah, Sarah in the face with a a, a compass. Oh, that's don't, okay. That's just her normal. Don't that's, yeah. serial that's killer what's... shame. <laughs> yeah, that's just what feels right for her. Like, oh wait, they they've been killing bugs off in the corner and eating them. I, that's Eat. that's totally fine. <laughs> your, your child enjoys eating HB pencils, but then she complains about how they they scrape on the way down. 
That's, that's not normal. <laughs> and not normal. and then there's some... No, Below no, no, this no, is no, an explanation. No, no, no. My shit. It's normal. Below this is actually an explanation of the different spectrum of um of the gender binary. So there's actually scales here talking about the difference between biology, gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation. They even go so far as to mention pansexuals, uh, asexuals, like all of the extra stuff. And by the way, I mention this because. When we're talking about gender identity, we still don't know everything there is to know about gender identity. The, you know, we're still trying to find more and more out. So it's not like that ship has sailed and we figured out everything that we possibly know about the spectrum. About where people lie on said spectrum or, you know, just understanding where this comes in. We, you know, we're still waiting for more and more and more information. So to sit there and say, well, um, all of the, these Tumblrisms, these are reality uh, be because we say so in these colleges and universities. Even Tumblr if they were 100% true, what makes them a topic for kindergarten? Exactly. Exactly. It's, uh, and, and why are you talking about sexual orientation with a five-year-old? And why are they excluding <laughs> the other kin? Why are they excluding the other kin from the curriculum? Yes. Yeah, it's. I, How do they I, know they don't have a trans kitty in their classroom? Okay, here, I mean, here's the thing, though. Whether or not they have a kid who, 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 you know, is an alcoholic in kindergarten, you wouldn't want to squash that, too. I'm, I'm actually going to send you guys this PDF so you guys can take a look at this because it, it needs to be seen to be believed. I, I, to I'm even believe think, it. to even think that they sent this around to teachers. And said, "Well, we're this is we're just trying to start a conversation, and we're not trying to indoctrinate anybody at all." And, and I liked that, even though some of the people who were protesting against this were, you know, religious, they said that this was something that was more appropriate for high school, and not just saying it's not something that should be discussed at all. They're saying, like, listen, you can discuss that when these kids are older, <laughs> but this is um. We honestly think that you shouldn't be sitting there and, you know, uh, I don't know, discussing that sort of thing, like sexual orientation, when they're too young to even be in puberty. Did oh, you guys see this video of the little princesses saying yes, fuck? Yes, yes. Oh, by what the way, the to, to clarify this, it, it's called fuck hate, and oh. actually people have been, um, yeah, I know, that sounds, that sounds wonderful. Uh, they're saying as in fuck hate, like, you know, get rid of hate, but... To, to me, it sounds like hate fuck, but that's in my brain. But um, anyway, their their most recent campaign video has been a bunch of you know girls dressed up like pink and pretty princesses with all the sparkles, and then they basically say, "Oh my gosh!" and they they start you know sh using dropping f bombs everywhere because they're trying to get people's attention towards to uh, their perceived problems like gender pay gap and rape culture and um, women being unable to get through the glass ceiling and uh, you, know, you know I'm, I'm we're gonna, gonna talk about wait, I'm, gonna talk, I'm, gonna talk. I'm gonna talk all right I'm finally I'm gonna push my way through damn it all right okay first of all how are they gonna teach patriarchy theory without referring to gender ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, uh, if, if actually stops feminists from going into middle school, taking the boys and brainwashing them to think of themselves as some sort of demonic entities and make them responsible for the violence of uh, a violence against women, but not not girls responsible for violence against men, maybe it's worth it. I know it's I think they would find a way. I think that they would still find a way. They would. They'd be like, do you see this purple crayon? <laughs> it's not like this dark purple crayon. This dark purple crayon is oppressive. If we uh, were all like these dark Skirts purple are crayons, oppressive. Isn't that skirts even more oppressive. creepy? You know, like they make the boys wear the dark purple patch. Maybe right. a star in purple. <laughs> and then they say those those... Those um those purple penguins, those ones are responsible for for oppressing the the lighter purple penguins. 
So the dark purple penguins are bad. <laughs> so wait, the star-bellied snitches against the the, the no star-bellied like snitches. Star snitches more and more sinister. You know, like the, we got we got all remember that the dark purple penguins are responsible for violence against the light purple penguins, and the light Damn purple it. penguins are always victims of dark purple penguins, and it's like. That that's starting to. I think that's a little too obvious. You really need male versus female to just hide what's going on because it, it becomes more obvious when you say the dark purple penguins are these these violent ape like creatures who uh, like to uh, you know rape the light purple penguins. You know, it's starting to sound like something that we might resemble something you know throughout history. And if these purple penguins are completely gender neutral, then it's possible for a boy or a girl to be. A dark purple Oh, you can't penguin. say boy or girl. <laughs> Fail. Uh, I, damn it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Rachel, we're, we're trying to meld the gender neutral language with <laughs> patriarchy theory to make it work, right? So we're saying that they could put like purple, dark purple badges on the boys and well, white purple like, badges. It's more like do those dark purple penguins, they don't believe the, the things that our light purple penguins believe, okay? And we're just trying to protect those dark purple penguins. <laughs> From, because from themselves. From, from themselves. Childhood. I, what? <laughs> yeah, so crazy. now we have to theorize that the dark purple penguins have a, a dark purple... Hey, check your light purple penguin privilege. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. you know, there's another possibility with this. If they could erase the distinction entirely, and there are no dark purple penguins, and there are no light purple penguins, it might be easier for the penguins to not notice when some of the penguins are disappearing and this might be a rad fem thing yeah that's right you're right it would be if uh... you erase masculinity then it doesn't it suddenly does not appear to be an attack on a gender anymore it's just something it's, that it's... happens to some people well you it's know i'm just gonna pick a pantone color and go we're just gonna pick a pantone cool. one third. but what would we call that because it would be like hegemonic dark purple penguinness hegemonic <laughs> hegemonic indigo attack on penguin okay all right let's, let's move all on right. okay. so, I, I knew this was gonna happen i knew this was gonna happen. okay 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 but we we lost shoe we lost shoe yeah, how do we get yeah. her back I don't know. I think she's gonna. She's probably gonna get back when she's, you know, back at her house. So, oh, does okay. that work could, still? But you know, we can just sit here and discuss some of the insanity that's been going on this week, anyway, because yeah. there's been so much shit going on with GamerGate. And yes, we're back on GamerGate again because the happenings don't stop happening. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. like, I have. Like, I have a theory. I have a theory, and I think it will tie feminism. <laughs> Gamergate, um, tactility, as as a as an artistic medium, okay. um, and the future of human communication, and it okay. all I comes it together. Penguins or otters with pants. Um, otters, maybe. I don't think penguins. Penguins, are, I, that would be sort of a side project. God damn it! Yeah, you know, well, you know, there's Who a lot against penguins, Allison. I have nothing against penguins. They're just. <laughs> A very, very complicated topic. You know, you can't just, just you cannot just have them as part of another topic. They have to be water birds, Allison. <laughs> I know, but they have to be their own thing because of the complexities that it entail within the penguinness, the hegemonic penguinity. <laughs> the penguin right. hegemonic. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm airing in the system. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> okay, okay, so ba basically what's been going on is mainstream media, of course, has picked up Gamergate, and as a result of all of that, uh, they're, they've only been getting one side of the story, but they just keep going on MSNBC, and you'll want to know why that is, it's because Brianna Wu and many of these other people are friends with folks at Recode. What is Recode? Well, they are a tech news site that frequently comes on msnbc and so when you sit there and say and you hear brianna we say well my friends at recode my friends at recode my friends at recode were listening to me and then suddenly i got this msnbc interview gee how did that happen i can't even imagine and then you sit there and you look and you realize that at least 
three of the people there present, or, or, or wait, or two people, sorry, I can't remember how many people, yeah, at least three of the people there probably are, the people there in the interview are either from Recode or associated with Recode. You're like, you're in the fucking Twilight Zone. You're like, how, <laughs> how did this, how does this count as news? I, I was under the, you know, I was under the impression that when you cover a story, you look at both ends of the story and you look at all the information and you ask the people of the crazy, angry movement that you think it is and ask them for their opinion. You don't just ask the people, you know, in media corruption when they're complaining about media corruption. I, <laughs> I don't know what, what else I can say. And from the beginning of that one video in particular that I'm mentioning, uh, Zoe Quinn is there and she's like, oh yeah, this, she just barely talks about the topic at all. And by the way, it has been confirmed that she has known Nathan Grayson since 2013. Wow, I was under the impression that, uh, you know, it, Kotaku didn't lie about this shit at all. Kotaku didn't lie. They didn't say anything, oh, they didn't, what, you, what, you what know, drives, about, what about them not crazy. What sex. drives me crazy about that is that, you know, they're like, oh, well, her sexual relationship with Nathan Grayson happened after he wrote about her, right? Um, yeah, so it's not like uh, maybe he wrote about her in the hopes of having a sexual relationship with her, right? Like, uh, like the like just because the the sequence of events did not happen in the order of she paid for it and then he gave her the good press, he gave her the good press and then she reciprocated, right? Uh, like th this is what gets me. That's not uh, that's not any fucking absolution of either of them, right? It, it's you can't like I'm not going to say that she paid for good press, you know, with giving sexual favors. I'm not going to because I don't know, right? But you can't prove that she didn't. You just you can't well, you not know, by saying nice, oh though. well oh well you know he they didn't start banging until after he wrote about her. Like what does that prove? <laughs> the thing that about by that is, time they knew so each other well enough to know they wanted to i mean that's but, but, they had to have spent some time together there you know, yeah there have been pictures of them together predating the time they were supposed to have not known each other before then or been in a relationship or anything like that where they were alone and possibly could have been having sex or engaging in a sexual relationship and I like how instead of investigating things further they said well Nathan has assured me that he wasn't fucking her then. Not at all. <laughs> he wasn't fucking her. He assured me. I, I, I did not have sexual relations with that. That's <laughs> 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 Quinn. I, I, honestly, I Clinton, Clinton stood to gain nothing from his sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> but he still He's, got a bunch of shit. <laughs> He did not. He did not get any power from it. He did not get any good press from it. He did not get anything good from that, other he, than he like cigars. an orgasm, right? Yeah, and, and, and yet they they nearly and, and let, yeah he was uh, they they had him up for impeachment over yeah. lying about receiving a blowjob. No, it wasn't even that because any any reasonable person would be like, yeah, of course he lied. I would lie. Like I'd lie like a fucking rug if I thought I could get away with it to avoid all of this mess. It wasn't that the mess, the impeachment wasn't about the lying. That's not what it was about. It it was nominally about the lying. That's not what it was about. It was about him getting a little bit of pussy on the side. That's yeah, what it was nice about. Age. Right? And and him not being morally upright. Yeah, no, not really. really. It was about him being the opposing party, and they course, think, thought course. that they had something they could get him on. Like, it it could have been anything. Woman. It could have been sex. It could have been uh, signing signing the wrong thing wrong. It could have been I, I, I stepping just... out of line in any little way. Went to they would have gone after though. Clinton. They would have gone after Clinton. Sure, it I, it I, would I, not I, have mattered what he did. They still would have gone after him. Oh, sure. He's, I tried. He it, was but like I didn't inhale. Yeah, he was like <laughs> you know, Slick Willie, the 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 anti-Republican. They would have gone after him one way or another. Yeah, there's 
And that's the thing, though. It's, it would have found something. Just, just think about all of the politicians that have been having illicit sexual relationships on the side that haven't been caught yet, or never will be caught. It, it's Actually, something you that know goes who, along who with got it more dramatically than him over over less was Gary Hart. Oh, which one Gary was he? Hart got shoved out of of the presidential race. Oh gosh, I think I was in high school, so it would have been in the eighties. Um. Because he had somebody sitting on his lap. Well. That was it. Just, somebody just sitting not... on his lap. Uh, and it's it's just complete ridiculousness. And, and and I gotta say something. I I have been interviewed before. We we've all been interviewed at least once before. And you know, I but I've never been you know, interviewed to the point where I'm sitting there on, you know, on HuffPost Live or on MSNBC or something like that where I'm going to be seen by, like, millions of people. You know, I don't go on... I wouldn't go on there with, you know, my hair dyed like Rainbow Dash and wearing, like, a Sailor Moon necklace. That's, you know, that's personal preference, but, you know, you want to... Come on! That has to happen now, Rachel. Rachel! (laughs) (laughs) At least personal... And and in the shape of a penguin. Well, yeah, Rachel! if I want to look ridiculous. And <laughs> okay, okay, the hair the hair is is up for grabs. Some people like alternative hair colors, but I mean, you know, at least attempt to wear prof- some somewhat semi professional attire to look like you know you're not full of shit. Yeah, like you're someone to take seriously. Yeah, that's, that's really the thing. And and this is this is. And say what I, you know, will about Anita, but she at well, least I, dresses I, I, the part. In, I'm gonna, in I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say this as a woman, right, who has looked into all of this stuff. I'm gonna say that as women, we, we get a choice. We we are not like men. Men don't have to choose between being uh, sexually attractive and being taken seriously, right? Women often have to choose between playing up their sexual attractiveness, right? And being taken seriously. Anna Kasparian is a prime example. She's like, oh, you know, and and I just, it, you know, I, I work really hard at what I do. And, and it just is very disheartening sometimes when people pay more attention to what I look like and, and how attractive I am rather than what I say. And I'm like, well, you know, y- you wear heavy makeup that accentuates your youth because, right, in women, one of the primary criteria for being sexually attractive is being young young and fertile, right? Now, wisdom and authority are not correlated with youth in people's minds. They're just not, right? So women are in a position where they they have a little bit more of a dilemma. Do I want to be attractive or do I want to be taken seriously? Which which am I going to, how am I going to balance that, right? <clears throat> People take Madel, took Madeline Albright seriously because she was an old fucking hag. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, People took Margaret Thatcher seriously in large part because she was, you know, she was uh, even though she had the trappings of femininity, she was not a very sexually attractive woman. And she never really managed to appear to be in her 20s all her life. Right. All her entire political life. Right. You know, this is this is this is what women have to choose. And I'm sorry, but dyeing your hair all the colors of the rainbow does not say I'm serious about myself. It just doesn't, right? And, you know, and wearing pancake makeup to make you look 30 years younger than you are does not say I'm serious about myself, right? Or I'm accepting of myself. It, it just doesn't. You, you even look at, you look at, I was looking at a photo that was taken in front of the Senate or something like that. And, and it was like somebody had put the caption, pick out the woman, right? And it's like a line of dark suits, right? Gray suits, one uh, black suits, navy suits, and one brown suit, right? All the same, just a wall of like uniform suits in dark colors. Very, very, very sedate, right? And one freaking woman in a flashy red blazer and a pencil skirt and the whole bit. And it's like, yeah, right? Because she's 
she she doesn't want to fade into the background. She wants to stand out. She wants to be sexually attractive. Well, I'm sorry, but people aren't going to pay attention to what you're saying if you if you express yourself visually in a way that's like not conducive to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's, well, thing here's the thing, though. I'm trying to remember who, who, who was on the third. Uh, who was on the third? Um, Karen, Karen, MSNBC one. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. Who who was on the third MSNBC one on though? Uh, Karen, mute. Karen, Karen, mute. Yeah. Sorry, I can hear myself, and I get all weird talking when I hear myself. So. But anyway, uh, d- does anybody remember who that guy? Uh, he's that he's that guy who's um uh, blue background motherfucker with all the words on it whenever he's. He, he debated Paul Elam. Who was that fuck? I can't remember his name. Matt something, I think. Matt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt Binger. Matt Binger. 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 With tentacles. Yeah. But not the fun tentacles. Yeah, he was Yeah, he was on He was on there uh, talking like he knew shit. And he's saying, guys, this is just, you know, uh, the patriarchy trying to oppress women and get them back away from the game controllers and back into the kitchen. That's what this is about. They don't want the women's working on the games. <laughs> I'm like, seriously, that's really oh your God. thing. Like, and and I'm, I, I like that interview. That what interview was like two you? people. Two, they, were, they were interviewing two people in their 20s. As if two people in their 20s, you know, like, Honestly, and this is the whole thing, right? Like with, uh, how like how long did I have to live to acquire the wisdom and experience that I have, right? Because I was an idiot in my fucking twenties, compared to now. Ditto. But I'm gonna be epic yeah, in my forties. <laughs> you, you are because you're actually quite sensible in your twenties, which is like a rarity. It's a serious rarity, and anybody in in their twenties who's mad at that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever freaking take anybody seriously. Hey, June's back. Yay. June, I'll be like, I'll be like a wizard in my forties. <laughs> hey, June. Hi. So, what's the topic right now? Okay, so well, while you're still here, um, well, we were discussing a bit of uh, the GamerGate coverage on MSNBC. What you were oh, God. Oh yeah, the shitstorm with all that. Uh, with the the crazy woman. Yeah, the woman who legitimately looks and talks crazy, but for some reason everybody believes what she says. Brianna, <laughs> you mean? Brianna Wu. Yeah, Br- yeah, Brianna. There was Brianna Wu, and then there was another one where they had late Alexander on, and that guy from before from Recode, oh. and they were being interviewed by someone from Recode, and they had Zoe Quinn on there, and then there was another <laughs> another one where it was just, it was just I a think big. It's just a big circle hug box. Jerk. It's a circle jerk, is what it is. It's like, hey, everybody, let's get a circle. It it's, just, um... it's like, well, oh man, that's good. I love watching it. I love watching it because it's so self congratulatory. It's like, it's like, harump, harump. It's like watching a bunch of conservative guys all agreeing with each other, too, right? Like, harump, harump. Of course, the women belong in the kitchen. Oh, you're right, Daniel. Of it's course, crazy because of. Harump, harump. Right, like, <laughs> like I, I just like how how is like the the back padding and and it, like where is debate? Where is where are the hard questions? There is where none. Is it's, how, it's all about my feels. <laughs> it's so funny. Journalist playing devil's advocate. There, like okay. it does not Let exist. Let you talk. Let you talk. So, it's just like they don't even re- They don't do any. Any research. They don't even go onto the tag to look what people are talking about. They just cover their ears and scream like misogyny. Like they don't even. Well, it's not at all. It's, it's all people they know, though. That's the thing. They're all from Recode or or are associated loosely with Recode or are friends at Recode. It's so crazy. Code and those are the people that were. Yeah, <laughs> to see that even happen in real time is ridiculous and then they call that news it's like yeah i got all my connections to the media after being you know having a death threat because of all of my friends and this isn't about corruption at all or my connections and don't you know that feminists don't have any power in the media at all like we just don't have the power you guys are talking about <laughs> the and now media I'm go on my interview on cnn <laughs> The media is telling us that the media is not corrupted. It's like, oh. 
Oh, okay. That's, I know, and it, that's, it's that's, feminist. Oh. It's feminist at the Guardian and and like at freaking HuffPo and on MSNBC and CNN who are telling us feminists aren't controlling the media. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know about you. I mean, I'm I'm I've got a regularly scheduled appearances on on the uh, on uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and uh, okay. news you know, 2020 news. You know, like they're yeah, they're constantly I've been on BBC America. No, fuck no, I fucking haven't. <laughs> No, you know, and, and oh, oh, they they actually just they just ask me questions and then they accept my answers as as like at face yeah, value. You're a they, special snowflake. They never, they, they, <laughs> never, they never actually challenge my ideas or anything because like yeah no because because I'm I'm like a member of the patriarchy you see and and so of course I have the dominant narrative and and everybody just accepts what I say because oh, okay, 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 while we have while we have shoe let's um. Joy, joy. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait. Are you suggesting that as a shill of the patriarchy, you don't have the ear of media? I mean, like we're all here shills of the patriarchy. Therefore, we're just playing modest. We're being, we're having false humbleness when we say we aren't actually appearing on all of these patriarchal medias and having, you know, you know, talking with uh, with, with world leaders about patriarchy. Because obviously, as women who promote the status quo patriarchy are we're sought out to, to to talk about this on large platforms because God. we're shills of the status quo i mean it, it wouldn't wouldn't make sense that actually feminists are shills of the status quo now would it oh my okay so so i've got some questions for for, for shu because a lot of people don't know who shu is shu is a is a youtuber but some of you do and some of you consider her your waifu and and we know we know what you do at oh. night when nobody's watching. <laughs> not you, not you, Shu. The people watching. at home. Oh, I know what she does when we're not. We watching. know that you touch yourself at night. <laughs> oh, she does. You know she does. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just. No, anyway. Uh, tell us a bit about your uh, about your screen name and what it means for those at home who may not be familiar with the meme. <laughs> oh, okay. So, like, I made my YouTube like four years ago, um, and. I um I was going through different ideas, uh, what to name it, and at the time um, I was a uh, I was a big uh, memer, right? All right, and uh, so honest, I decided to take the shoe on head. Yeah, um, we don't speak of the dark times, but yes, I know. <laughs> so we don't speak of I had a lot of options. And, <laughs> oh, we no, no, definitely not. Um, and so I decided to shoe on head because it was um, it was actually a, you know the the you're the man now dog site. It's an old YTMD. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I saw it on a long time ago. Some shoe on head thing, and um, it was a thing where people go onto like cam horse sites and tell them to put shoes on their heads. Uh, so I thought that was funny, and I just made shoe on head, but that was taken, so I had to put a zero in there, and which is kind of ironic because I always make fun of when people have um, numbers in their story names because it's like, oh, why can't you be original? But uh, yeah, it was shoe zero and head. Now that is how my thing came about. <laughs> the end. Well, that's as good as any any other story about about <laughs> names, really. I mean, I I I never even bothered to ask Allison why she chose Typhon Blue. Do so, you actually want me to answer that, or just? Oh, let I that... don't. No, no, no. Maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe another day. Maybe another day. Um, but no, it's it's actually uh that it's, it's kind of you've been on YouTube for four years. Yeah. Well, and, longer than that. Um, I had all different channels. I did all different things. Uh, and uh, when I get bored, I just kind of move on and delete everything. <laughs> Ever do that? Don't. I'm saving all of your shit. I'm saving your okay. videos. Okay. <laughs> A hundred fan but, boys. Um, now yeah, I've been around since 2006. Not on shoe on head, but on different. Wow. That's a long channel, time. But yeah, I've, 
I, I, I didn't even go on the internet or even have an email address well, until 2008. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was, I was wow, offline for a, a while at that time, too. You're such a Luddite, Karen. I know, I'm a technophobe. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, and no. You have to I know the best way to desiccate a human body. Silica gel, definitely silica gel. There are other ways, but silica gel is the best one. Did you have you ever like invested in maybe a, a you know like a human body sized de food dehydrator? Me? I no. don't. I don't. Well, no, I don't. I don't know if they <laughs> sell them. Um, but actually, if if you actually pack them in sawdust as well, sometimes that can help. Um, you can also cut them open and fill them with sawdust and just remove the entrails oh, and dissolve them in I some kind of... I went to get something to drink and now what the hell just happened? <laughs> to dead, dead bodies and sawdust? Where yes, did she that come I don't know how I would, how I would dispose of us. Don't murder shame us. <laughs> <laughs> well, purple penguins, I will murder shame you all you want. All I want. I have I have a lot of I have a lot of knowledge of certain things that that I did not come by in a very bad way. I just I just know these things. I feel like you're masking it as a joke. This is like completely serious, and you're just you feel no. the need to. No, no, she, she's not. You feel she's the need to come out, everybody. <laughs> no, no. Oh, gosh. oh, but I think the NSA is listening, so I hope they investigate me. That oh, well. nobody wants to hear about your necrophilic ways, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's an audience for it. <laughs> I'm cracked about this. I'm not. It's not. Nope. A Rule 34. I'm calling it now. Karen. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Oh, anyway, there, anyway. Um, oh well, yeah. It's called. Um, what was it? I think it was a wait, necromantic. Yes, there we go. It, there's um, actually. Think, but yeah, anyway, there, 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 there's I think, porn of it. Anyway, we a new low. okay, we have more questions for Shu. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Um, when did you start noticing the emergence of all sorts of people known as social justice warriors, the snowflakes? You know, when did you the start emergence noticing? of them? Like, yeah, when, when did you start? start like, when, when did you start noticing them? Yeah, when did you start noticing them and talk a bit about that? <laughs> uh, I guess in like 2009, um, I saw it start to happen to people I knew in real life. Um, their humor started to change, and it was weird. I remember, but I'll never forget this one time. I think this was, like, the breaking point. Um, I tell this story a lot because a lot of people ask this question, but my friend screamed in my ear, and I was like, like, oh, God, now I'm, like, in one ear. And she just turns to me, a completely serious face, and looks at me and goes, that's not funny, my friend Uncle Jeff. And I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> and wow. um, they were all uh, really into Tumblr at the time. And um, I started to make the connection between that website and what's happening <laughs> to my friends. And a few years later, actually, the connection like came together. And I was like, wow. Oh, it is actually this website. Like, it's this like, little beehive of, like... And it's, ac it's academia. It's... um colleges that's doing it it's it's crazy it's just like this infestation um it didn't happen slowly either i feel like it just exploded in the past it's four so years yeah. yeah um but yeah that's when i started to notice it like four years ago yeah and did you can i follow up with a question on this uh, do you have any particular stories like aside from that one of uh of engaging with social justice warriors um, outside of the internet or real life? Or uh, real life or internet, just, just so... Anyone. Any, any fun ones. Juicy. There's fun so one. many of them. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Oh, one... This uh, girl I knew on the internet. Um, this big group of people I used to talk to, she started transforming into one. And um, she, uh, she just flipped out one day. She's like, it's not my problem. I'm more morally superior than all of you. <laughs> she, she wow! Least, uh, uh, wow! At least I gotta give her points for being honest. For being <laughs> honest about where she's coming from. But I wonder if she's That's really honest. Like, 
She, it just sounds like something so unconscious to say. I wonder if she even recognizes that her superiority. Well, it's, 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 it's really not about caring about other people. It's, it is about a sense of moral superiority, right? So green. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. let's, let's, let's let June continue if she has any more stories. I have a bunch. I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, let's see. There was that one. That was a good one. Um, <laughs> well, just take your time. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I can't really think of any. There's on Twitter, especially. Well, but, yeah, yeah, Twitter is like a hive of that stuff. I, I think people have a tendency to to talk about Tumblr, but at least you know the people there, you know, have a very specific mindset. Whereas Twitter, it's like it, you don't know if somebody's nuts unless they sit there and write in their off on the side in their description where they say like proud man hater i've actually seen that happen where they say <laughs> proud miss andrist in their description oh, no, no, no. on it's twitter a, it's <laughs> the thing it's actually a trend on a uh, tumblr and twitter to be yeah. it's like it's cute to, to be a miss andrist now it's cute to be they've made it a thing like it's cute to be unattractive does that make sense yeah, Not, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a store. I think it's called uh, I Am Human or something like that. I can't remember. Um, but it has a lot of different sort of misandry or like violence against men kind of related paraphernalia. Where it'll be like they, on bags yeah. and pillows and yeah, they made it. Shirts. They made it like all kawaii. Like it'd be like misandrous, and there's like hearts and like '90s like uh, what is it? Yeah. Like sparkles, yeah, vapor, like, vapor wave. Yeah, got in on um, that too. Yeah, I'm to all, which blog it was. It, Jessica it, Valenti got her T-shirts from this exact same place. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the well, I bathed the male tears. Yeah, and there's and actually a, the misandry bag. That one of them, one of I them has a, their pro part wait, wait, profile wait, picture. What, what were you gonna say, Jen? Um, I have a story about at one of those websites. Um, ad for one popped up on my Facebook. And I clicked it, and it was all this, like, misandrous, like, feminist, like, your princess is in another castle, like, your male deluded fantasies, like, all these weird, like, ridiculous, disgusting, agenda-pushing clothing items. Um, and in that subcategory of clothing, like, misandrous, uh, feminist, blah, 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 there was a phone case that said, it was a Tumblr phrase, it was like, I can't even... And the, so basically they're grouping these Tumblr memes into feminism and it's hilarious. Okay, like, okay. Oh, but, actually, Karen, Karen, before you go, June, um, June, June, can you, can you quit the call and come back in because you were getting a lot of interference and it's, it's beginning difficult to, to hear you. So if you can just hang up and then re come back in, it, it might help. Okay. All right. So we'll just, okay, we'll, we'll just natter amongst ourselves till you come back. Okay. We'll All keep right. this well, new face warm. Yes, we'll, we'll keep silly, it warm. Yeah, we'll keep it warm for you. I, I was, I was just thinking because because June is kind of like a memester, right? I I think she would be the ideal person to memify the the male tears euphemism for semen, and, oh, and yeah. push push the Jessica Valenti picture, right? I bathe in male tears, uh, with the caption. Bukaki party at the bottom. Oh, um, I I think I think that would be that <laughs> yeah. Would be well, wait. Do we, do we have any things uh, from from our our Twitter like coming in um, to tell us like what, ask what us questions? Want to say or uh, oh, no. yeah, yeah or, or questions or anything? Because I can just start can reading it? from from Jonathan McIntosh's blog. By the way, yeah, for those of you who don't yeah. know. For, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jonathan McIntosh is Ania Sarkeesian's boyfriend, and the only reason why he keeps coming up is because he is a batshit insane. It's gotten to the point where we, there's a new term now for being so crazy social justice warrior that and, and so delusional that you don't that you're you don't realize yourself or what you've just said, and they call it going full Macintosh. I was <laughs> wondering what that meant. Yeah, you've gone full. Yeah, you've gone full Macintosh. Um, it, it, it's ridiculous because he actually said Gamergate is 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 over, and then with one of the tweets, and um, 
Uh, I think there was another one. Well, I, I will actually go to that right now. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm going through Twitter. I didn't have it open, I just, so I just I'm have such an irresponsible host. I, I, single-handedly no, no. soured me on my favorite Apple of them all. The Macintosh? <laughs> Yeah, I, I really liked the Macintosh apples, but now now it's like J names for girls. You oh know, my gosh. I'm, I'm leaving a single tear for you, Karen. And I grew up next to a Julie and a Jill who used to torture my dog through the fence, and now I just can't. I have a hard time with women with with okay. Okay. Bad. Okay, okay. Jill, All right, well, let me, let me actually, before we continue, let me let me reassure the people listening that your waifu is back. She is back hi. in the house. Um, okay. uh, hi, hi. He... my internet connection is really terrible. No, actually, it's, 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 yeah, we hear you better. a lot better now. Yes. Might as well okay. fix that before it um, continues. Go ahead, go ahead. So while we're on the topic of Jonathan McIntosh, there's this parody account on Twitter called yeah. Jonathan McIntosh. <laughs> and he tweeted to me the other day. He's like, Hey girl, hey girl, you ever been in a movie? I can hit you, I can hook you up. You ever heard of a Kickstarter girl? I can make you a star. <laughs> it was like <laughs> the best, best thing I've ever seen. What, so, what's, the, what's the account? The account's at Tropes vs. Hose with a Z. So Tropes vs. Hose. <laughs> I'm looking this up right now. Wait, are you serious? Oh, Tropes I should see Tropes it. Josh's Hose. hose. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Jonathan Hose. Okay. Are you, have you pulled up Jonathan McIntosh or whatever his name is? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, yes, I have. Well, I have, the, I have the regular one. Pussy slayer, yeah. money taker, baby slash. maker, and writer. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, I've got the real account here, so we got to keep these clear. Like Crystal will read the the parody account. Well, there was a there was a different parody account where it got really close. It was so de like dead on that you couldn't tell the difference. Whether or not it was done by the real Macintosh, <laughs> he's a parody or... of himself. Yeah, he really is at this point. And we see here. Uh, is now a good time to reshare my gamer dude privilege checklist article and tag it with Gamergate? I think it is. I'm not kidding. I think he linked to an article where you that helps you check your gamer dude privilege. This is. <laughs> Um, what are the, what are examples of gamer dude privilege? Wait, uh, okay. Like, oh, like, but that's gonna require me to go into Polygon. Oh, uh, <sighs> fine. Yeah. You know what? I will. I will go. I will step into hell for you, Ellison. I will. I will do it for the, the show. Okay. <laughs> that accrues upon you. Oh my gosh. And we I, need I, to start I, describing I actual last... gamer dude privilege. You know, like the privilege of getting kicked when you're down just because you're a guy. Or, or, or the the privilege of being called a creep for standing too close to the wrong girl, or, or you know, how about the the privilege of being told that you haven't done anything when with your life when you have a job and you pay your bills just because you uh, happen to play games. Or how about this? How about this? getting your Xbox Live account suspended for six months because you called somebody a bitch? Yeah. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go, guys. I've got the, I've got the list. Go on, June. Go on, Thursday. This is bizarre to me, this whole thing, because um, before this, I was like 98% sure literally everyone on planet Earth has played a video game before and enjoys video games. And now I'm being told that only, like, white males do it, <laughs> which is hilarious. And, and I'm being told this by game journalists who write and make a living of writing for video games. You probably yeah. had no and idea that you were a dude, did you? I had no idea. Well, actually, yeah, like, it's it's crazy. I'm a white, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, and you're, I never knew I had so much privilege. It's, you're being accused of that as if it's a crime by other white cis males. That's the I know, the that's the best part. Like, Jonathan McIntosh over here. He's the whitest of white guys. <laughs> and he he's also a, he's also a hedge fund baby, and he's actually uh, from what I understand from what I understand he's actually really rich. His like family is completely loaded, and they have like nothing better to do than to basically tell other people how to live their lives. Like apparently his what's, from what I, from what I hear his his family like owns even owns a, like a private island and shit like that. They're that loaded. So okay, it's, who's 
which which one of them is the guy who who he did a, he did a speech in front of a nearly empty room where at the end he, he oh, richly I think destroys was, um... a video game. Oh gosh, I'm uh, trying to remember what his Grand, name is. Grand Theft Five. Oh, that was another hedge fund baby. I can't so, remember his uh, name. I think it was Lipsch- like um Lipsch- yeah, Lipschitz. I think it's Alex Lipschitz. Let's yeah. go to the polygon list of gamers. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Here, here we go. And this was um, epicenter, epicenter of shit. Re- okay, feminism. okay. Here we go. Daily effects of male gamer privilege. Number one, I can choose to remain completely oblivious or indifferent to the harassment that many face women face in gaming spaces. Are you fucking serious? Because because nobody what? ever shit talks men. On gaming yep. sites. That's Regardless all they do. Their age back them or, for their game. or background <laughs> or well, any of that. Is, okay, they, can I put out the obvious? That is literally all they do. It is. is shit talking the, the entire media is shit talking male gamers. Met white male cis cat whatever the fuck ever they're gamers. The entire we haven't media. gotten to two yet. We haven't even gotten to two yet. <laughs> Number two, I am never told that video games or the surrounding culture is not intended for me because I am male. What? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, but... No, no, what 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 the entire culture is saying is you're bad for liking this. Okay, so yeah. well, here's the thing is, they don't... Un- okay, people like Jonathan McIntosh don't understand that there's, you know, different games that are pitched to different people like different genders because women are more likely to play the social gamer kind of things. They're, they're more likely to play their Bejeweled and their uh, Kim Kardashian adventure simulator thing where you get try to rise up the A-list. They... Is there- they- is is that really a thing? Yes, yes, that oh, it's made millions oh, of dollars. I'm okay, let's not get distracted. You. Let's not. Oh, yeah, get okay, okay, okay. Number number three. I'm in trench in my street right now, and I'm gonna go hurl myself. I'm in gonna, it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trigger some people. <laughs> I don't with die. These things, I'll be back next week. Okay, number three. I can publicly post my username, gamer tag, or contact information online without having to fear being stalked or sexually harassed because of my gender. Oh. Really? Oh, Do they realize? Shit. That this stuff does not happen, or I don't, I don't no, get it. it. Does like, happen. It, we know, like people in who are men, presumably straight, white, cis, hat, they are actually getting threats, and that they're reporting them to the police, not actually putting them out on Twitter or Facebook or you know, oh look at me, yeah, I'm being yeah. threatened. Um, they're actually dealing it with it through the proper channels. So this is total nonsense. Men also yeah, get yeah. these and, threats. And what- what would you call somebody making multiple phone calls to your place of employment to get you fired? Would that not be harassment? Because you know what, in my mind, that 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 would qualify as harassment. There have been people who have been fired as a result of this for being involved with Not Your Shield or GamerGate, and these people they've they've decided that they want to engage in public shaming. In fact, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that's what uh, what's his what's his face said on a fucking uh, MSNBC motherfucker who um what's his name Max Matt or, or... Binder. Matt yeah Binder. yeah yeah Matt Binder that motherfucker Fuck was actually smart. openly talking about public shaming like this is something that we should all Good. engage in oh man for... <laughs> Stephanie Guthrie Stephanie Guthrie who fucking was planning she was planning she was uh she was orchestrating online harassment of Ben Spur, right? And then planning real-life harassment and blacklisting of Ben Spur, right? And somebody said repeatedly to her and politely to her over Twitter, you're a horrible person. What does she do? She freaking, she allegedly engages in a criminal conspiracy to have that man charged with criminal harassment because she felt so threatened. She felt so threatened by she that so that triggered, while Karen. that case was pending, she gave a TEDx talk bragging about how she sicked the internet on Ben Spur. Yep. And how people need to be held accountable for their actions, right? So then there's this dude who's like, uh, ladies, you're kind of going into the like realm of revenge rather than just like holding people accountable or, or expressing your opinion. What she do? She hasn't fucking charged with a crime. If, if you know what, I'm gonna finish this this checklist here because so, if I'm giving if I'm giving Polygon money with my clicks, I might as well get through some of this. <laughs> go ahead. All right, all right. All right. Uh, I will. It says I will never be asked to prove my gaming cred simply because of my gender. 
Okay, I don't know if anybody is aware that games are an entirely merit-based system where <laughs> it doesn't matter whether or not you're right. a man or a woman, you're constantly having to prove yourself through yeah. your ability. <laughs> don't men have that to applies to their credits? Like, isn't yeah, that the do. point? It's... Like, y y d I, I constantly hear talk of noobs and... and whatever else here, and lean on your head here new guy you know it's it's Let's like here's the thing they don't want to prove themselves that's feminists don't like to prove themselves for they should just be taken at face value that they're amazing and awesome well it doesn't work like that in gamer land like you, you know, either I'm, suck see, at video games or you're good at them margaret i have to just suck at some video games guys, many guys, guys relax so, so. margaret thatcher was pre-scient or prescient when she said, you know, I owe nothing to the women's movement, feminism is poison, right? It's especially poison to high-achieving women. Ooh. It uh, is. It is. Right. Because, right. because every feminist is jealous of women who can make it in, in a meritocracy. They are all jealous of it. They want it. They don't want to work for it. They want to complain and have it handed to them, right? I've seen and, before, and, though. What a nightmare. Nightmare. Like I, yeah, I, Hannah I just made not want to live in that world. Yeah, but but I've said this before though. They don't really care about women or minorities. What they're talking about is how how they care about things that directly benefit them and the friends and the the women and the minorities that they happen to like. They don't really give a shit about you if you have okay, a different opinion if you well, if you don't ascribe to feminism they don't give a shit about you of course they don't you're is, you're just a male in in disguise you're a sock puppet account there's there's a starcraft because starcraft is one of those games that like you can actually earn money playing that game at, at a high level right mm -hmm. okay just like poker and shit like that right and and you know there's there's one uh, extremely high achieving player who is a transgendered woman mm -hmm. right now what do feminists have to say about her and what does the rest of the starcraft fan base have to say about her because as far as i know most of the rest of the starcraft fan base right has nothing to say about her other than fuck she's good right Exactly. They don't used to be a dude. Used to be a dude, but fuck, she's like fucking unbelievable, right? right. Feminists have nothing to say about her at all because she doesn't exist to them. Because someone, especially a transgendered woman, would never be able to rise in a meritocracy of nerddom like competitive StarCraft. The ones that don't fit their agenda. Don't exist. Do not exist. Yeah. yeah. They ignore them. Or they'll attack they them. They don't. Yep. Attack them until they fit their agenda. Yeah. <laughs> That's really sad. And there's a lot. It's a long ass list. So let me see if there's some, another good thing on here. Oh. Uh. Okay. It's ba he's basically saying the same shit again and again and again. When um. Okay. When purchasing most major video games in a store, chances are I will not be asked if or soon to be buying it for a wife, daughter, or girlfriend. So basically saying that they won't assume that they're buying it for... Uh, okay, here's the thing, though. That's such we, a trivial, little, like, insignificant thing to be angry about. What is that, like, number four on the list? No, that's, uh, that's number, uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, thirteen. It's <laughs> also bullshit. Really annoying about pulling I things... buy games for my son all the time, and nobody pulling... ever makes those assumptions. Pulling things out of his ass to complain about. <laughs> well, okay, but there, there is, there is some truth to the fact that you know when you are going, when I'm going to buy drywall with my boyfriend, right? <laughs> and and I want to know where the freaking drywall putty is, right? And I ask, and, and, and we go up to the guy, and he starts talking to my boyfriend. And my boyfriend says, I don't fucking know. It's her project, right? <laughs> okay. And then, and then the guy starts, you know, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. What are you doing? You know, do you have the right? And I, I use the terminology, and I use all of the right language, and I show that I'm knowledgeable. And then, you know what happens? I get extra respect. I get, I get this kind of, 
oh my god here's a woman i'm i'm the expert at home depot i'm like the guy who used to do construction and now i'm semi-retired and i'm like i i got hired as an expert and i'm getting paid like copious amounts of money compared to all the other employees at the store because i'm an expert and this woman this woman knows as much as i do about fucking drywall see that, that's, that's something else awesome right and and you you get you get treated because all you have to do is show that you're knowledgeable and then you get like like you get like extra fucking cookies it's not it's not like you get all the that's just points. bare minimum okay, of what okay, you shoe, of i you. sense that shu wants to speak go ahead shu you sense okay that exact what exactly you said um you get extra respect for knowing all that um this is what baffles me about the whole, whole gamer thing for years there's been this thing um where women will pretend to love a game and they'll call themselves the gamer girl because they know that they're going to get respect they're going to get attention they're going to get you know all that praise for being a girl who likes video games think they so are where, so yeah well you know um so where does this whole male gamers hate female gamers come from because it's completely false it's actually the opposite um both well, guys who play video games always want a girl to, like, play with them. They want, like, someone, a partner who shares interests and everything. So this freaking John Mahos, Jonathan Mahos, is out here like, oh, they don't want women in <laughs> their industry. They don't want female devs. They don't want female gamers. It's it's so false. I can't even... I um, like wrap my mind around it. Before we continue with the wait, Karen. Before we continue with this conversation, I just want to ask you, June. Is there a way we can call you on a phone? Don't give your number out, but I am on a phone. Oh, okay. Like, no, I mean on a phone. Yeah. Like, what? What do you mean? Can you? Oh, yeah, like you no. Know, as far as as far as uh, like find another way to because you're still breaking up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um. Is is there a way I you can wait, Skype? Can you call like a you can call a regular a phone. Normal you can call phone? You, you can call, like, can you call a normal phone. Okay. Just don't <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, if you put it through the chat. Okay, I'll the, the, the chat. Okay. Skype chat. And we can answer your question. All right. Okay. Okay. So, um I think that they just want to blame men for why women aren't interested in games in the same degree. Well, yeah. what 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 drives me crazy is that is that when when women come in and they show that they're competent and they show that uh you know that they could take a little bit of the sh and 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 no matter how much a woman might get shit talked in any given industry you can almost be guaranteed that the men are going to be shit talking each other even worse um and so you you look at at that and and you you just sort of if a woman can show herself to be competent she's welcome Right. It's only the ones like she was saying um, where, you know, these these gamer girls go in there assuming they're going to get respect because they're, you know, quote, interested in games and blah, blah, blah. When when the men there realize that they're not interested in games, right, that they're just there for uh, personal emotional validation, sexual validation, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um and uh and oh you know you're you're really you're really cool here let me let me buy you a funny hat on team fortress 2 or whatever right um th this is not a team player this woman this is this is that kind of woman is not a team player she's not competent she's a faker she's a poser and so i mean like i i don't i don't understand where the the conflict is um the you know, conflict like is, I, I can tell you where the conflict is. And this is, this goes back like 30 years in, before, uh, before there were real, you know, video games out there. This goes all the way back into war gaming, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, right. and, and all of that shit, where there were women involved already. There were girls involved already. I mean, I've been gaming since I was a teenager. And I've been playing video games since they were available on, on the public market. I played and video games the, on my yeah. Commodore 64. Yeah, yeah. We, we had a Commodore 64. We had, what else did we have? We had an Atari 2600, and we had an Atari computer. Um, we had Apple computers. 
we have uh parts for probably right now in my apartment we we have like a computer graveyard in my apartment we have like 30 different you know wow. bits and pieces That's, of 30 different computers in my, my apartment mind, right now, that, that, that my husband likes to put together but i mean this we've there have been gamers who just happened on the side to be female and it wasn't you know, girl gamers. It was just gamers. We were just gamers. There was none of this girl gamer shit. And and then along come the social justice warriors. And it's like we were invisible all of a sudden. You know, oh, you can't be a gamer. I'm a girl gamer. I'm special. Look at me. Woo! You know, and, and it, it became this, this thing where you had to you had to treat them differently and the guys had to treat them differently and they had to be special and they had to be somebody and, you know, not in comparison to everybody else. And the, the grossest thing about it was all the while you can, you can see them looking down on the people that they're asking to give them special treatment. Those people in their mind are not good enough for them and neither are we. None of us gals who just wanted to play and just wanted to hang out and and cut loose and make fart jokes and and you know drink nine jolt colas and eat a box of Twinkies all in a, in the space of three hours while attacking a dragon, you know this this we were scum to them mm. and 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 shit and you know all of a sudden it it. it, it you get this. Oh well, you know, you, you you would be you would enjoy this group a lot more if you showed up with some makeup, and, and you know, you would enjoy this group a lot more if you would maybe dress up a little for it. And it, it's bullshit. It's just bullshit. And that bullshit, you know, guys aren't stupid. They can see through that. They they're not gonna sit there and and not be able to tell the difference. You know. And you know, like you said, you were you said you were stupid when you were in your twenties. I was on steroids and antihistamines and all kinds of asthma drugs when I was in twenty in my twenties, and I had stupid emotional moments and everything. Um, and and I went through a very little bit of that for a few months, where um, I caught girl gamer fever for a little while, when I realized all of a sudden that that I was getting treated extra special and extra nice because I was there and I was not treating them like shit. And I screwed it up once with one group. And, you know, I, I learned that that was a dumbass thing to do. The girl that, that doesn't learn that the girl that comes along and is offended because when she screws up with a group and, and she treats them like shit or, demonstrates that she's looking down on them and they come back and they dump her or or they don't treat her the same anymore or whatever that girl that is the fake girl gamer and of course everybody's going to get pissed off at her because she's asking them to get pissed off at her when you shit on people often enough you you don't have any reason to complain when you piss them off I I'd actually I actually just remember this one. It was it was a clip, and I forget who it was. It was Crowd Demon or Thermic Light or or some other uh, sort of uh, MIGTOE YouTuber, right? Who who he posted some clips of. Uh, it was a, it was a comp it was a game competition uh, at a convention, and it was filmed and and the there were two women. And two men, and they were playing in teams against each other on I forget what game it was. And the women spent the entire time talking about, you know, just shit talking these men. The men didn't say anything, they were just playing, right? And then the moment the women started losing, they started talking about, oh, you think you can just look at my tits? You think that I'm just here for you to look at? Blah, 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 right? And, and started to accuse these men who had not said one word through the whole fucking thing of sexually objectifying them and treating them like objects and not treating them with enough respect and blah, 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 right? 
It was just the most amazing thing. It was the most stunning guys, thing guys, to watch. Karen, Karen, Karen. Karen. We, we need to, we need we to get need back to on things. things. And you need to mute oh. Karen because Echo. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh wait. Do we do we have any questions on the on the the Badger Twitter? Like, because I don't have access to the Badger Twitter, and you you do. So do 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 the thing I, where you look at your tweets. I, I'm doing the thing. Okay. Do, right. do, do the okay. thing. See, see if we got any questions. This. I didn't do this. I was supposed to do this first. Call um, in the June. Someone needs to call in the June. Okay. Oh no, I'm call, here. I, call. Yay! We, we we didn't lose our shoe after all. No, no, I'm, I'm gonna ask some questions here, people. So quiet. At Bandcamp uh, on Twitter or at Dark City UK asks, My question for Shoe on Head is What's been your favorite question so far? <laughs> My favorite question so far? And, and, uh... and there's an addendum. There's an addendum. Ask, it, ask this question at the beginning. Unfortunately, I didn't do that uh, uh, at Dark City. Well, yeah. we, we failed. We failed we everybody. Failed. Well, he, here's a here's a good uh, here's a good thing. Someone told me I need to to put a shout out to uh wait to, to uh to Otter Jesus Otter Jesus you know you oh. you know you know who Otter you are. He, he, yeah, he keep he keep yeah he keeps push posting pictures of like reaction otters to like all the crazy shit on Gamergate. So <laughs> it just is the greatest thing ever. Otter he, Jesus, bless he's you. so sweet. He's they like he's you, the Otter nicest. Jesus. He's the nicest. Otter Jesus, Otter? I've met on, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Praise Otter Jesus. Yeah. Praise Otter Jesus. And answer the question, Shu. Oh, what? What's the, the question. What's the favorite question? Wait, wait, wait. My Before favorite, you think... favorite question. I don't know. Yeah. I only got well, like, two so Well, this is your far. favorite question. Um, does your does your dad actually look like Chuck Norris? Because I think somebody said that. that kind of. <laughs> you heard that, folks. I guess. That kind of looks like Chuck Norris. I don't. I don't know if he's got like a fist under his beard. <laughs> he but... never. He never had a beard until recently. <laughs> now he does. He's Chuck Norris. That's good. Okay. Yeah, my, the next my question. Looks like an iguana. So. <laughs> what? Uh, next question. Everyone. Sh um, okay. is related to Chuck Norris. Uh, uh, Shu's dad and Chuck Norris tangentially a little ask her why she has the dev video aka the greatest thing ever hidden instead of letting the world enjoy it I, sh <laughs> I should definitely unprivate the dev on un unlist on un unlist the dev video uh, oh because dev, it is dev, Shh, Karen Karen let, let Shu speak it's, she's a piece of work oh my god <laughs> It's it is quite the entertaining video. Um, it's funny because the video has like nine hundred likes and only one dislike, so it <laughs> looks like it looks like Deb found it and disliked it. It's the funniest thing. So I'm kind of scared to to un unlist it, and then someone else is gonna unlike it. It's gonna be like, ah, oh, now there's two dislikes. Not uh, even anymore. I'm but um. Sorry about that. Um, no, I know that's not the reason I have it unlisted, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I know. I, I think should. part of it, part of it probably is like you acknowledge that she's obviously mentally ill. Yeah, yeah I don't. And don't yeah, wanna, you don't wanna, exactly like I don't. You, you don't want to like encourage people to attack her or anything, yeah, right? I, yeah. I um I censored out her name, so that should help too, but. Um, yeah, she's, she's prolific enough. She's prolific definitely... enough. That just the name Deb is enough to. No, we we've all we've all experienced Deb. We've all experienced the wonderful <laughs> experience. Wait, 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 wait. I, I have not. I have not experienced it. Oh, okay. you're so lucky. She doesn't just come on my videos and leave these like, I don't know, four thousand word. <laughs> That unpunctuated, no novels. That shit, fucking. Oh my gosh! Novels. How men are Nazis and shit. Okay, oh and God. and have always and and who, how men kill women system systematically because men prefer men to women and all of this other fucking completely. That's, that's weird. That sounds oh, like a she's, twisted yaoi fantasy. She's like completely. They might be okay. giants. Need to write a song about these. This but woman. 
Okay, but she doesn't just she doesn't just come on my videos. She follows me around enough that any video that I comment on, she's sure to show up at. Okay. Right? And leave a comment specifically calling me out in most cases, right? Oh, Karen's just blah blah blah. You know that men are just Nazis and they like infanticide women because men aren't born are women aren't born men and men prefer men and blah blah. Oh my god. Like she's she's completely fucking and to, and to, to just to offer a counter argument to that men infanticide women first of all or infanticide girls first of all it's women doing it and usually they're doing it because uh, they want a son to take care of them in their old age yeah. so it's not that they value boys because they're boys it's because they've, they've they have the same value for them as a farmer has for a strong ox yeah no they can't they can't hold girls by law they can't hold girls in certain cultures as accountable for their upkeep as they can hold their boys their sons so oh, June, um, uh mean gene says that to set your pc games to double frame buffering it's the number one thing that will speed up games on shitty hardware that's a little wait, 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 for june wait repeat that uh Tell June, this is by Mean Jean, tell June to set her PC games to double frame buffering. That's the number one thing that will speed up games on shitty mm -hmm. hardware. I now have to understand what this means for yeah, I, will, I, will, I will have to understand this as well because I have a shitty computer. I do too. No need for this information because apparently she's a console peasant. I am. <laughs> so, You're yeah. not part of the PC master race? Shame I'm not you. part of the mustard race. Well, I mean, even me, even me, all, all I ever played on the PC was Age of Empires, and it was only because if I played the Persians, then I could actually win an entire war just with elephants. And I could, like, I could, cause here's, here's the strategy, okay? Because you, you, you block everything off, and, and you just, like, you do, and, and you have your, your boats, and you build your boats, and then, then you send, like, a whole bunch of boats full of elephants way up north over there. And you just set them on rampage, right? And then all of the other guys, guys, go to deal with those elephants. I, like I need to play this now. Wait, what game is this again? Age of Empires? No, okay. what if you were strategy? Of elephants over to, like, like, bang down and stamp down the castle and gore the king to death, and then you win. It's, like, it's the most beautiful thing. Like, all it takes is, is like, just elephants. focus on the elephants, right? And... It, like I, I did this. I, I fought every single type of, of civilization in that game, playing as a Persian, just using my elephant strategy. It always worked every single fucking time. <laughs> and Age of elephants. I'm watching the elephant stamp and gore the king. Oh. It's super fun. What, what, what I like to do, what I like to do whenever I'm playing like one of those hardcore violent games. I like to play like the, the cheesiest, most sappy romantic music in the background as a nice contrast because it's hilarious. Because it'll be like, we may only have tonight, and I'm like killing things with fire. It's <laughs> <laughs> not on you. The world to be love. <laughs> the music low. And so we have to <laughs> uh, Baby, happy. baby, baby, oh, like baby. <laughs> Sorry. This is twice Karen singing. I love it. And it's on record. Well, no, no, no. Fuck Justin Bieber. I gotta say that. Just really, really. Don't, don't say that because, because my coworkers call me. And, and I tell, I'm saying, I'm saying, don't. I'm saying, fuck Justin Bieber because, okay. I I have no opinion on his music because I don't listen to it. And whenever oh, I hear it, I, and whenever I hear it, I I honestly think, or uh, at least most of his early stuff, I think it's done by a, a woman. And then I come find out later on that it's, it turns out it's actually Justin Bieber. He's, so he's, what? He's, oh, he's, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, but Justin so Bieber is like so off topic. Let no, but the, but the thing is, uh, but okay, what? Let me just finish this. And the reason why I'm saying this is because he's a fucking douchebag to his fans. You know, say what you will about his music, but there are people who don't have the best music in the world that still don't treat their fans like shit, <laughs> or spit on the crowd, or you know, do all these horrible things. Treat them like crap. He peed in a mop bucket once. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In, in a kitchen in a restaurant. I'm calling official mm. contatrix rules. Okay, fine. What? Stop it. Silly place. Silly place rules. No peeing Fail. in fucking mop buckets, Puck. That's it. <laughs> what? Are 
swaggy up up too. Shut the fuck he, up. He All thought right. it was swaggy. New question. New question. I don't All right. I don't feel. Shh, quiet. And you too, person in the chimney. <laughs> With your soup sit covered forehead. Okay. We All right, sorry, I gotta find another one here. Um, I don't get Gamergate. How is this from people complaining about violence on TV and film since forever? I think someone's missing a, a verb in that sentence. How is this different from? I'm, I'm guessing different. This is from Racknad at Racknad. Adjective actually, Allison. Just, oh, sorry. I, I don't know. Yeah, thank you, Grammar Nazi. How is this different from people complaining about violence in TV and film since forever? June, go ahead and and make a stab at that if you want, if you will. Um, well, I hate the term gamers, but I just I don't know other word for it. But gamers have been like under fire forever. It's from like as soon as video games came out and in the 90s and it's everything has been blamed on them from like school shootings um murdering what else is there there's there's the satan religion thing there's like um they're always under fire i think it's part of it might be is because the social justice warriors and the um feminists kind of see it as an easy target to go after um but none of this has been proven there's there's no connection between someone who goes on a shooting rampage to it being connected to video games um it just so happens it's like oh he had a video game up oh, that must be it like it's like saying like when they found osama bin laden uh saying that they found call of duty in his cave and being like <laughs> oh that's why he was a terrorist like it's <laughs> it's oh, like no. the Islam had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I, I I know, but you know it's. I was like, no, uh, it's, I'm being silly because like that's, easy... it's a very extreme version of of Islam. It's a very specific. I don't... Oh, exactly. <laughs> but I think that's what it is. I think it's just because people see it as an easy target. That's between I would agree. And... Yeah, and it's absolutely. Just, yeah. Oh, by the way, I, I found, I did manage to find some interesting shit feminists say. Uh, this is from David Foster tweeting, it says, um, if Joss Whedon and Patton Oswalt have chimed in, maybe it's time to castrate these gamer game, uh, sorry, gamer gate degenerates. Castrate as in cut the dicks off the people with a sharp object? Is that what you're saying? It's like, uh, it says, um, I'm assuming you object. I'm asking for clarification, and then I'll tell you how I feel about it. And says, I feel extremists need to be dealt with extremely. That's all. These Gamergate threats are God. extreme. So, yes, I... What, so threat said, okay, I just want to clarify. So, Joss Whedon said that Gamergate people no, should No, no, no. Uh, David Foster. I don't know. I think he's um involved. Is he an actor? I think he's an actor. Okay, so oh, how was Joss Whedon involved in this? Oh, no. It, uh, Pat, uh, Joss Whedon and Pat Oswald had previously come out and spoken against Gamergate, saying all kinds of, like, violent shit about, like, how they really hate the gamers and stuff and that these people need to just go away and they're just misogynists and stuff like that. I'd have to go... Okay, so it's, uh... Okay. Let's see here. Uh... The most disturbing thing about Gamergate and 8chan is seeing the glee they take as they destroy women in the industry. And that was from <laughs> Brianna Wu. Oh, God. Don't don't listen to anything that person says. She yeah, is legitimately who. crazy. Yeah, um, you could tell that in her interview. Inappropriately oh, yes. named. Oh, it's, it's appropriate crazy that person. Wu is in her name. Yep. Woo. <sighs> so, um, yes. yes. Okay, June, do you have more to say on that topic or whatever topic this is uh, currently at, or shall we go to a new question? Um, yeah, you can go to a new question. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let me find one. Have you ever met, this is to Shu, have you ever met a black, Mexican, Chinese, demisexual, <laughs> uh, other, uh, with no legs? <laughs> I have not. I have and not shit. met a black Mexican Chinese transsexual fem 
feminist with no legs, but I heard that it is a new unlockable Super Smash Brothers 4 character, and um, <laughs> thanks, thanks to the feminists, uh, we now have those characters in our video games, and everything is everything is sorted out, and everything's over. We're okay, guys, the, uh, like you're, you're, you're representing. We got diversity. Go home. We can all go home. All right, we can all go home now. <laughs> go ahead. Good, I've, good collected game. You. Get rid of I've collected okay. you all in my token view, and now I am completely uh, progressive, I guess. Yeah, this, is, this, yep. isn't, uh, this isn't racist at all in trying to just, you know... <laughs> Uh, you see, it's just the thing that's, that I find so, that's what I find so offensive, though, uh, because what'll happen is they'll be like, we really want to show how inclusive we are, but then instead of, you know, just making a character who is a good character and then just happens to, you know, be black or Hispanic or trans or yeah. gay, they, they just sit there and slap that on as a secondary thing onto the blandest character you've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> just because. It's ridiculous because that's like uh have you ever seen um or you ever heard of feminists against disney or something uh um, no no but but that would make sense actually yeah <laughs> what the they got there was like an outrage on, on tumblr about how pictures and frozen were too white and they said frozen was whitewashed and like do you realize that the whole fairy tale was like a nordic fairy tale like they don't they just want to slap like black people in there and like they just want to like it's actually written, it was written by um reason. it was written by hans christian anderson who is danish yeah. uh, but, but yeah. yes but yes about uh yeah i think it was about that particular part of the world though um it, you know even though it was you know and yeah. the point is that it's ridiculous to want to make Characters that, that were originally. Yeah, that would be like in Aladdin, just like making Jasmine white. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. They actually, like, she's, she's already ethnic, yeah. though. She's already, she's already like Arabic, though. So it's exactly. Like, that was, it would be no. There would be no sense in make putting, slapping a white person in Aladdin. So like you know, no, like it's just just pandering like to people's needs is just. Yeah. It's not how stories, it's not how art works. Well, it's not yeah. even pandering to people's needs. I mean, treating people uh, like they are, like the, the, the important thing about them is their skin color or exactly. features of, uh, of being, I don't know, on being in a wheelchair or being, les like treating these, these things, these, these attributes as a sum total of who they are instead of creating when, a character that fits in the story. Yeah. Is, and it's like, um, they're the ones who make race, who make all these things a bigger deal. Like, they, they, they do the opposite of what, um, the people probably want. Like, uh, I, I don't know. Someone, like, you know the Ghostbusters thing, how they're making it into females? Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. Bullshit! Please and tell I'm me like, they're. Uh, why? What the fuck? Because I, they can't make their own chicken. Wow, movie guys, I found the craziest shit just now. Already exists. Guys, okay, okay. Let let June finish her thought. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm ADD. <laughs> oh no. Um. Oh, so am I. Don't worry. Um. Yeah. See. You. I could tell. Forgot. <laughs> um, oh, like. Yeah. You know, the Ghostbusters thing is like, I hope it's a good move. It actually makes sense as to why they're women, and they're not just women for absolutely no reason. Um, like, I, I hope it makes it fun. Like, I hope, I don't know. Like, like I thought Bridesmaids was hilarious. Like, if they, if they, like, if the if that was, like, the whole thing, like, I don't know. Like, I, they could make it work, but it's like, why make it women, though? Is it just to pander to the women, or... I, like, I don't understand what's going on here. There's no, there's no reason for it, to be honest. There's none. Territorial it's just, pissing. It's just I mean, which, you, could, you could instead just, you know, make a cast of, like, men and women together, you know, that are both Ghostbusters and they're being inclusive, but they don't want to do that. Yeah. It's like, it's just got to be all women because pandering. So it's, well, it's ridiculous. If you wanted to make a movie to put women in it, you could write a script to make a movie for women, you know, to act in, instead of taking an existing story and shoving yeah. women into that. Yeah, it, it's I mean, just There's a million things they could have done that's I more mean, creative. There's, there's so many things that they could do 
but they they just don't do it. And it, uh, I mean, it that's could just, be that's good though. Imagination. It, it could be. We it, don't it know could, yet. Well, yeah, it could be. I mean, I I thought Bridesmaids was was hilarious because one of the things that it did touch on in that movie that they, that a lot of these romantic comedies don't ever touch on is they don't have as many of the realistic relationships between uh, between women and how easy they can sit there and become odds at each other because here she is she's, she sees that her life is changing because her best friend is getting married and then she's got this best friend that she didn't know about and the best friend is like a total bitch who keeps trying to outdo her when she's <laughs> trying to be there for her friend and then it ends in this big bitch fight and they're just going nuts <laughs> so it's like like I hope it's like a I hope it's a comedy of some sort or something, and it's not just, like, painful Ghostbusters. Vaginas. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, vagina. Oh, gosh, it's... Yeah, Ghostbusters. This Ghostbusters. makes me wonder where they're going to store the, the ghosts. Vagina version. I, know, I, I, really don't... Like, I really like the realistic portrayal, because I don't think people understand enough, or I think they do, but they don't ever talk about it, especially not in the sort of feminist-approved... Um, depictions of women which is where you have the, re the realistic relationships where there is like this power struggle against the mean girls against or, or even against that one bitch in your workplace who for some reason has like a stick up her ass and just just completely takes it out on everybody <laughs> around they don't ever sit there and acknowledge that they're like that's sexist if you acknowledge that women are bitchy sometimes and are intolerable and they treat other women like dirt sometimes that's sexist. <laughs> okay, why do you think you're treating women like dirt? I'm going to jump all over this and ask you, uh, Rachel, I heard you a while back saying um, that you found some shit. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, I've, I've been eagerly awaiting you telling me about I the need, shit. Okay, wait, I need to read this, this sentence because it's the one of the funniest things. I've, I found it on Reddit's Tumblr in action. It says... I need feminism because girls literally get demonized for liking pumpkin flavored things. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. You got to read it like this. That's, that's the Tumblr speak. You have to read it like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay, like feminism because girls things? get demonized for They're like getting demonized. It's things. just fucking hilarious okay. that it's so re that such a novelty product has okay, become let's, let's, so let's, popular let's... among yuppie women that they're so boring. Oh, it's wait. The most... <laughs> I got something. Okay, so the other day I saw this and it was like, stop basic bitch shaming. Yeah, basic bitch. <laughs> what? A basic People... bitch. Okay, did you get? Did you guys watch that that video on? Um, oh gosh, I think it was on. Uh, God, damn. Uh, college humor. It was. It was like a basic bitch, and there was Patrick Warburton on there, and he was talking about there's a girl, and she's got like basic bitch syndrome, and it's when it's an it's an extra normal woman who whose um, idea of cutting loose is wearing a pair of pants that says like juicy on the butt or something, <laughs> or <laughs> they're just. And they're uh, shaming over that? Basic, <laughs> so basic bitches are apparently like girls who wear Uggs and who drink Starbucks and, you know, like wear sweatpants. Uh, that's apparently basic bitches. Yeah, you, you just, bitches, uh, just like you're, a, you're something really, you're an ultra regular person. Thing. It's not even like, and so, and so there was actually a girl pissed off about it. It was like, I'm sick of this basic bitch shaming. Like this is this is out of control. I shouldn't be oh, I shouldn't be demonized for enjoying Starbucks. For being How dare you criticize me? I don't you know I'm female? Yeah, oh, but Kenna, that's not even criticism. It's just a joke. No, it's really not. But I know. Know. they don't know that. A lot of people. A lot of people like the. the a lot of people like the the, the pumpkin spice. Uh, it, items because because I, I yeah me too and i can make my I own like, because i can oh. just go buy some pumpkin pie spice and then shove it in things because that's how you you save money <laughs> and you make things pumpkin spice flavored yes yeah. yes by using pumpkin spice it's 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 very it, i, I had a pumpkin spice latte today Good. yay you like pumpkin spice things does that mean something i mean I i'm like a victim yeah oh, I, apparently yes. 
depression. I'm being depressed by my pumpkin lump. I mean, no, I'm being shamed for my love with the pumpkin stuff. Guys. <laughs> you don't you by your pumpkin love? They're they're oppressing my pumpkin love. That's what they're doing. Oh my gosh, you guys. Stop pumpkin shaming me. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. And we know you all like to sit at home in Jack Go Lantern. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do with the silly place is a pun by Hannah. Cappuccino. You have all been punished. Cappuccino. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, can we can we let's move on to another question? Okay. Wait. Oh, oh yeah, another, another question. I've got some other questions. Well, I got okay. Well, no, no. Was... I got a question. I got a question. Shh. Quiet. Okay. Stop. Stop. <laughs> things of anger. Okay. Right, okay. Okay. All right. David Midcap. This is a serious question, so I'm going to throw it out to everyone. Uh, David Midcap at David Midcap. Oh, this now indicates the time. Never mind. Um, some good, say good feminists should stop using the name due to the negative con associations with it. Should Gamergate do the same? N okay, can I answer that? It's people don't want feminists to stop saying being a feminist or stop associating with the word feminism because of the negative so-called associations. It's because of the negative things that feminists are doing, like believing in hateful concepts like patriarchy and male privilege and rape culture that's that that stuff is hateful and people want to those individuals and it, this these ideas wouldn't exist without feminism to pimp them and create them and perpetuate them and spread them so yeah it's like we want we want people to stop associating with feminism or at least disassociate from those terms and recognize them as hateful um and i'll throw it out to everybody else does anyone else want to respond to that silence <laughs> this is very you pretty Let much covered it and, uh, well the yeah i i, I yeah i agree I, and it's gamer gate is being a stand for people's voice is being a stand for people who are being shamed it's being a stand for people who are losing their jobs their lives are getting ruined uh, where feminism, it's the opposite. It's actually contributing to all of those things. So it's not the same thing at, at all. Um, and yes, feminism in action is creating monstrosity upon monstrosity and just perpetuating division between people. Uh, where Gamergate is actually uniting people who are being a stand for not being bullied uh, and not being turned into the scapegoats. So yeah, it's completely different. Yeah, and, I, and I, the thing is, the difference is logic, reason, and actual observable evidence. Um, I, I, feminism has observably negative qualities to it. Gamergate people are not saying that that women or purple penguins are, uh, <laughs> you know, creating a rape culture in which they're raping Gamergate people or anything like that. They're not really promoting these hateful kind of ideological concepts. But feminists are. Therefore, it's, they're not comparable. I'm, I feel like I'm throwing this into a void. Have, have, I, have, I, have I stepped it's, it's on? It's the difference between. It's the difference. Between oh wait, I thought my I thought my mic was on. I thought my mic was on. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I have passed on the curse to you. Yeah, right I, now. yes, yes, you have. Wait, okay, okay. Here, the here's curse the, of the thing. Mute button. When when it comes to to feminism in um. In, in Gamergate, what, what we're really talking about, we're not, I don't think anybody is opposing rights for women. I think that's just something that's generally understood by everyone as something that we as a culture want and that is already present. But what these people don't seem to understand is that there are these folks who didn't seem to get the memo for whatever reason that women have every right that men do at this point. <laughs> And, and they want to then go say, oh my gosh, all these people are oppressing you because what's been happening is that the second waivers, they start sitting there and spewing their nonsense to all these younger people who live in a different world than it was than it existed in, in second wave feminism. I mean, we, we, we work the same jobs. I mean, there's, there's very few jobs or very few kinds of jobs 
that men can work that women can't at this point, usually to do with the, uh, you know, physical, you know, physical capabilities and things like that. But other than that, there's, there's really nothing keeping you from getting a job in the tech field or in gaming or any of those things. But what's, what's happening is they're blaming the, it's very specific people are blaming their inability to get ahead based upon merit on things other than their own shitty ass skills. <laughs> Instead of sitting there and owning the fact that they're not doing as well as they anticipated and then working harder to get recognized by everybody. Because it's pretty hard to not notice what, you know, someone like who is a girl in a mostly, you know, male field does. It's very difficult to not notice what they've accomplished, even if it's very minimal because they stand out because, you know, they're female in the industry. And you're like, okay, I have, you know, awesome. But the thing about it is, is that instead of getting better and being recognized for what they do, they sit there and say, well, it's patriarchy that, you know, that's why you're criticizing me or that's why you're saying that you don't like my stuff is because I'm a woman and not because I cut corners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's what this really comes down to. When we talk about Gamergate, these, these women, instead of sitting there and apologizing saying listen i i did take advantage of some things in the industry or i did act out of line and i did act in ways that were unethical and i'm very very sorry and i'm going to resign because i feel that's the correct thing to do what they're then saying is no the reason why they want me out of here is because of patriarchy and men don't want me in this space and all this other stuff that's what they're saying, and that's their excuse. That's their get-out-of-jail-free card for being part of the corruption, because there were men involved. A ton of men were involved in this corruption as well. And the reason why women like Zoe Quinn are... They keep being brought up is because they're the most visible part of it, because they're the sloppiest. They didn't keep the, the secret well I enough. Actually, they, the reason why they're being brought, brought up is because they're the hardest to attack. In other yeah. words, they're being thrown up as the shield and all the men are behind them. They didn't uh, cover their tracks, though, as well as they could have. Yeah. Especially, you know, some of these people are better at covering their tracks than others. Had nobody drawn attention to this in the first place, you would not have noticed the corruption with people like Leigh Alexander or Maya Kramer or any of those things. Those things were hiding in plain sight. And that's why people were able to notice it. They just sat there and said, okay, well, let's take a look at this because this doesn't seem right because nobody thought to look. And that's what happened. It's not that this is an attack on women. It's that the actions of some corrupt people drew attention to other corruption. <laughs> okay, and that's a very apropos rant. But let's, uh, shoo, are you there? All right, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Did you want to? Did you? Did you feel like adding anything? Like what she said, like, um, this, this is about, about corrupt people. Um, they don't see that because all they see is gender. It's like they're obsessed with it. Um, you could have a conversation about the weather to one of these pe people, and they will change it. Like I said last night, they will change it into a gender problem. They will change it into a gender issue. It's like they do these crazy, like jumping through hoops in their mind to um, bring up the fact that they're a woman and use it as a shield. Um, and you see that with, like, Zoe and uh, Lee Alexandra and Anita. It's it's all about women, my women, my patriarchy. And they don't, they don't focus on what people are actually mad at. They just cover their ears and just, like, scream. Um, they're like little children throwing a tantrum. They won't listen to, like, anything else that anybody has to say. Um, but yeah, exactly. It's about corrupt people. It's not, it's not about vaginas. It's not about anybody's genits. <laughs> as, as much as they want it to be. Oh, I'm supposed to give you a shout out from Nefanor, who wanted to say that he, get, he gives you a formal invitation to uh, a game of Cards Against Humanity. Actually, I've been thinking about, I think we're, we've all been trying to see if we could eventually, by the end of all this... Or, or somewhere in between, organize, like, uh, uh, people of, of Gamergate Cards Against Humanity game broadcast. Oh, that would be so fun. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs>
We'd have to make Gamergate cards, though, so so people get on that. <laughs> oh yeah, we just... we can make a custom deck. Yeah, card cast, card cast will let you let you do that, and then you can patch it into pretend you're easy. So, but I've got an off topic, so so go carry on. <laughs> Anybody else have things to say? <laughs> And uh, Nefanor also put up into the chat a very valid point about this. One of the reasons that the women involved in this keep coming up is because they keep bringing themselves into yeah, the conversation. Exactly. Don't yeah. talk about me! Stop talking they're, about they're, me! It's like, quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! And by the, the way, reason, and by the way, give me money. I, I've been victimized. Give me money. Yeah. Guys, there's a reason people, guys, there's a I reason. Wanna, I want to move on to another segment. That's okay? Yeah. No! Um, <laughs> I, I I actually have no opinion. Stop pressing us, Allison. I I was I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna get triggered. I was just being arbitrary and faces. and ornery. You're gonna trigger and me. I don't want to be a purple penguin. I'm gonna be a blue bunny. So there. No, you have to be a purple penguin. There's no, no. blue. Bunny. Well, well, can I be a sloth? Because you know those things are the cutest things ever. No sloth. Really, I'm scared of sloth. Why are you afraid of sloths? Look at the babies. Have you seen they them? Have claws. They're so creepy looking. They're rapey. <laughs> the rape sloth. Oh gosh, the rape sloth. My my boyfriend actually tells me I look like a baby sloth. All he right. Tells he tells me that all the time. Okay, Aww. zoo animals. All right, okay. zoo animals. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, whatever. Oh, oh. All right, just one last stupid shit feminist say, and this right. is this is a heads up from the venerable. Beady, Betty, oh, what? Be Beda? I don't know. The venerable B D B E D D E. Okay, put it in the chat because I, I always read that. The venerable, venerable bead. bead. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, venerable bead. Whatever. I mean, could they? Could you choose a name any more problematic to my dyslexia? Anyway. Problematic. Um. First, this is from venerable bead. First it was elevators, now it's Starbucks. Even by the egregious standards of the Guardian, he's referring to a Guardian piece called Attention, Don't Be a Creepy Dude Who Pesters Women in Coffee Shops and on the Subway. This is a breathtakingly mean, even by the egregious standards of the Guardian, the referenced article, is a breathtakingly mean-spirited piece. Lindy West observes a man attempting to spark up a conversation. I read that as spank. That's why I had the pause. <laughs> Damn it, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> you You're disgusting, just... dirty, dirty. I know. No, actually, it's probably just my dislike. You are so nasty. Lindy West observes a man attempting to spark up a conversation with a woman in a coffee shop and concludes it Wait, to be... Wait, this is illegal now? I mean, it's really... Oh, it's not against the law to... to... To, pro to proposition a woman in a coffee shop. Here, here's the thing, though. Wait, if we're, she didn't if say we're... proposition. Yes. Let her finish. Let her finish. She, and she didn't say yes. proposition. Okay, okay. Spark up. Okay, let me just get through this kind of sentence, guys. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up and listen. Put my privilege. Listen and believe. <laughs> okay. okay. West of, Lindy West observes a man attempting to spark up a conversation with a woman in a coffee shop and concludes it to be a subtle form of murder. Conversation is as murder. I must admit that's a first. In the first paragraph alone, West indulges in ageism. The man is older than the woman and does thus a creepy old dude and offers a critique of his conversational gambit, which she cruelly concludes was insufficiently interesting to warrant the woman's interest. West offers no allowance that the man was simply lonely and wanted to experience even a, simi a simulacrum of contact with another human being. Instead, she predictably... Eli Bede, the next time you send something... Simpler words for the idiot, please, who has to read it. Instead, she predictably segues into rape culture, arguing that men attempting to converse in public with women they have hereto never met is simply another example of, a, of men talking from taking from women without permission. Of course, West offers nothing in the way of solution to the increasing atomization of our public lives and presumably wouldn't care less if the entitled quote-unquote douchebag went home and alone in the love shoved his head into an oven. She concludes that generosity and basic decency are favors, not obligations. And what an example Lindley West sets. <laughs> generosity and basic decency are favors, not obligations. I, I'm guessing that's when a man expects gener uh, basic decency. Let, let's set aside generosity, but just basic decency from a woman. That's a favor that she's granting him. Wow. 
that I, basic- you know, like, Lindy, Lind, Lindy West, Lindy West is a fucking piece of work. Let me tell you, like, isn't she the one who wrote the? Isn't she the one who wrote? If I admit misandry is a thing, will you guys stop making it a self fulfilling prophecy? I think she is. I think she is, what? and what? yeah, no, uh, she's a Jezebel. No, I, I don't need it. Oh, well, yeah, I think she's the it. one. Well, there's your problem <laughs> right here is that she writes for Jezebel. But here's the thing, though. I, I really have to wonder how, okay, if you're going to sit there and start up a conversation, uh, and, and this is just personal preference, where, which of these places are you more likely to meet a decent person to start up a conversation with? At a bar? Or, 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 or a coffee shop? I mean, okay, to meet a nice girl. That depends girl. on the community okay, you're in. Okay, okay, you're, okay, here's the thing, though. At a coffee shop, the girl usually buys her own fucking coffee, and she's already bought her own coffee beforehand, and so it's so the girl isn't just talking to you because you bought her drinks. <laughs> yeah, but it's you're... you know it's a, it's a situation where you're like, hi, how are you? How was your day? Whether instead of hey, do you want to go back to my house? Okay, so it's a different kind of conversation. But I mean, it's kind of conversation. But it's the the reality is that that's not even the point. Like, I know, but it's the uh, point. Uh, is that uh, she's saying that basic decency isn't something that women have to afford men. Like basic decency. Where is this? You have to. I thought she was saying that she wasted her life, like that he was wasting her life in doing so. Yeah, but where is the like? They insist that men respect women no matter what, and yet you cannot. That women are not expected to afford men basic decency. This this is one of the things. They're substituting the word respect for venerate. That's why. My my daughter my daughter, uh, like, cause she she works often late at night, right? She's, she's 18. She works late at night. She walks. We don't live in the nicest neighborhood. Actually, we live about, we live in the sort of like the six block by six block neighborhood in between the rent a room by the hour hotel and the oh. drug strip, right? It's a very, very nice neighborhood, but it has a lot of foot traffic through it that is going in, in between that hotel and the drug strip, right? And so mm-hmm. she walks home from the bus stop through this neighborhood. Sometimes at like midnight, and uh, she gets hit on, right? She's not she's not the like the hottest chick, but she gets hit on, and and she, here's the thing, right? They'll be like, "Hey, good looking, we're going to a party. You want to come with us?" And she'll say, "Oh, no thanks, but it's kind of you to offer, and it was really nice to meet you." And she'll shake their hand, and they're so stunned, right? That she's half a block away before they even realize what happened. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? it's funny, because you know. You could you could actually you could actually shut this stuff down by treating men with basic decency. Oh, thank you for the offer, but I apologize. I must refuse. You know, yeah. and and they're, they're so I'm really nice to meet you, and and you know, and and I see you as a person. Yeah, and and then they just and the the reality is that I've actually heard of another anecdote where a woman. Um, a, I guess she was a feminist, I don't know, but what she did was when she was being catcalled, she used to respond really aggressively, but then one day she decided to just look at the guy, smile, and say, no thanks, and he said, oh, so you're, you're not like that, I'm sorry <laughs> for, for what I was saying, um, yeah. I, I, I got the idea that you were a bitch, the catcalling, I don't even know if like 95% of it is actually sexual, I think a lot of it is simply just wanting to to throw your a sh- or, you know throw a stone at the rich guy's hat and knock it off yeah so, no I, like honestly like i was i was standing in the grocery store and i was like i was i was uh i was poor at the time right single and uh ra- you know like supporting three kids and i was i was like furiously trying to calculate the price of cheese based on some some cheese that was in a 906 gram package and some cheese that was in a 750 gram package and trying to you know do the math in my head to find out which was cheaper right and i'm i'm like i'm i'm just like frowning trying to do this math in my head and i glance up and there's this guy and he he's looking at my butt right and of course i'm still frowning because i'm tr- still trying to do math right and as i'm looking at him and he gets this look of extreme mortification on his face 
and he just kind of goes white as a sheet and like turns and goes the other. And I, I, I realized like a second or two later, Oh my God, he thinks I'm mad at him for, for him looking at my ass. And I wanted to go after him and say, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay to look at a woman's ass. Yeah, well, it's, you know, the reality it's is okay he's probably got that. a lot of abuse when he's been, been, been yeah. doing that. But I, I gotta, I gotta, cl- I gotta shut you off there, Karen, because we are in the final yes, stretch. Yes, we are. We are in the final stretch. And- okay. But uh, before we, before we go into the final stretch, let's give June, an, or, or sorry, Shu, an opportunity to, to respond. Do you want to have a final word? And maybe a final question, Jenny. I, I um, I don't really know what to say. It's okay. Um, it's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's, okay. We should have you back on. It takes a while to get used to uh, us and be able to get a yeah. word in edgewise. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta, gotta have back. In. you gotta be. You gotta have elbows. But I can yeah. give you a final question from one of your fans, if you like. Um. Sure. Okay. This is from Martin R. Oh, God. Vuilimote mm. at Tuscan. Oh, you, oh, you people hate me. Um, Martin <laughs> says, Shoo, how do you keep your octopus legs hydrated? Oh, God. It's this guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so this is a normal thing? He's, <laughs> right. he's Vince. Is this, is, that sorry, I have sorry. octopus legs because because no one has ever seen the bottom half of me. So <laughs> well, I, I, I can guarantee you she doesn't do it with silica gel. <laughs> oh, my God. oh gosh, that's, that's so silly. Uh, yeah, because um, that would actually be um, sort of desiccating. Wait, how, how do I get Senpai to notice me, Nishu? Because cause, cause King of Paul and Monday Matt don't even know I do. <laughs> What, what's the reference? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, so, oh, it's it's a it's an anime thing where basically no, no, senpai no, no, no. is your upperclassman. You just sort of in in my world, which is very small, I admit, you just came out with a lot of gibberish. King of Paul. Do... King of Paul. But I don't even know if we have to the Caesar it. bust as his icon. Yeah, okay. yeah, and and, but, and one day Matt is a skull, and and yeah. Internet Aristocrat is like this. This sort of French looking gentleman. <laughs> That's his thing. Yeah, I know, but it's like, I don't, at this point, point, I, don't know I can't even get you to explain all of that gibberish that you threw at me. I can't, I can't. Okay, it's an anime reference. Basically, Senpai um, is usually, it's an a- acknowledgement of somebody being of a higher status, like an upperclassman or something like that. And it's the ongoing trope in romance anime is that there's an older guy that you want to notice you that you've got a crush on or something like that but the on but but the ongoing joke is that you're like you admire somebody or it doesn't even have to be somebody that you're interested in romantically it's someone that you admire and then <laughs> just okay, but they but, don't but, even but, know you but, exist okay but, but <laughs> okay Rachel, no i can't okay i Rachel, gotta shut Rachel. you both up what, gotta what? Shut you both. what we gotta we gotta be have no what? time left Karen, no time. Yeah, four no. minutes. Four minutes. What is no, waifu? We don't have four minutes left. That was like two minutes ago. Okay, we have two okay. minutes. What is waifu? <laughs> it's uh, is a traditional girlfriend she... or a girlfriend that like you will never basically unrequainted love situation where you admire someone from afar and probably cry while you know masturbating to yourself and That's thinking so about sweet. her on a pillow. Everybody's yes. waifu. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're people's <laughs> waifu, Karen, as well. <laughs> I'm, Karen, I'm Karen you're my wife. I told you this. I don't know why you don't listen to me. Okay. All right, people. We, we're in the home stretch. Like, you, you guys all got to shut up. Thank, thank you, Shu, for, for coming on on our show, our, our lovely little show, and put, putting up with us. And, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, you know, you just, you just have to ram your way through with these people, like I'm doing right now. But it's got to barge in. You got to yeah, build up yeah, your way yeah. through. So. You got to yell. Yeah, okay. I am yelling. I am yelling. Make animal um, noises. Yes. <laughs> Shut up. You don't even yell, Allison. Oh uh, my god. I am yelling. I'm yelling pretty hard. You're not fucking yelling. Yelling? You wanna you wanna hear yelling? You wanna hear yelling? <laughs> I wanna hear yelling. I wanna hear yelling. I wanna yell. Okay, okay <laughs> bitches, bitches, calm down. I gotta I gotta do the announcement. All right. We gotta do the final announcement. Patron, since you guys who are listening, not the people that I'm yelling at at the show. I've come this far, consider coming a little further. And if you like what we have to say, 
if you want us to help to spread our message of evil, <laughs> and maybe I'll yell it at some gender point. Equality. <laughs> of gender equality and actual legal, you know, like actual equality that includes men and excluding them. Please consider donating on our patron, uh, which is at patron.com slash honey badger brigade. And yes, I have fixed the link so that actually works. Don't and you can donate know. there. Um, that right. helps us to do the production, to Better set right. time aside to do this stuff, and to. Yes, yes, yell it across the land. And the reality and go is on that, trips and things like that and visit you guys. Well, no, go on trips to, to support people at men's rights conferences. Yes, yes, All yes. I got to know is you guys ain't paying me for the Gilbert Gottfried shit, so. <laughs> silence Winch. Um, and... silence, you said Silence Winch to Karen? Yes, I did. Um, it, Allison. Yeah, so if you want to see you this Karen. message. <laughs> Spread message of evil spread throughout the globe, then please consider donating to us on Patreon, Patreon slash Honey Badger Brigade. Where I will get triggered. Yes, <laughs> someone will get triggered, I'm and there are. I'm just little... kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to get triggered. Okay, who's going <laughs> to? Anyway, end, end it, end it. It's, it's so horrible. Carl! Like a furry torpedo to the jugular, this is Honey Badger Radio, radio with bite.